Good evening. I call the meeting of the City Council Finance Committee to order for Tuesday, June 4th, 2019. And I believe it's around 6.35. Uh, councilors, I just want to thank everybody for last night. I think uh, our first, first night went pretty well. Mm -hmm. We got out of here at a reasonable time. <laughs> but I did hear from a couple of councilors that uh, were a little concerned with some of the I guess some folks didn't quite get the text that I sent out about speeches and staying within the, uh, the budget. Uh, we're here to discuss the budget, so we should try to keep it within the budget lines mm -hmm. and talk about the budget lines and ask questions that pertain to the budget. If we have other issues that are, should be brought forward to the department heads, we sh that's the reason why we have the power of resolve and bring those individuals in front of us. That being said, we should go right to number one, madam. Okay. City Clerk, Anthony J. Zioli, Clerk. Mr. Clerk, mm -hmm. bienvenue. Good evening. Hmm. Good evening. You look a lot different from this angle than when I'm there. You know. <laughs> Tell me about it. I'm seeing faces now, you know. I think what I'd like to do is let you people and the general public know what the clerk does and what his office does. <clears throat> so I'll start off with a, some of the information that we have. And we'll give you some numbers and dollars and cents that the clerk's office takes it and is responsible for it. We issue certified copies of births, marriages, and death certificates when needed. We issue licenses for entertainment, various other licenses, as well as hunting, fishing, which part of goes over to the election commission now. We process all marriage intentions applied for in the city of Brockton. We handle all corrections of any records in the cu uh, custody of the city registrar. And the city clerk has custody of all birth, deaths, and marriage records pertaining to Brockton. The city's clerk's office is designed to promptly and accurately respond to the public's demand for certified records. General responsibilities are that the function and responsibilities of the position of city clerk as provided for mass general laws and revised audiences of city of Brockton are as follows. Organize and preside, proceed in inauguration and organization of city government, administer oath, oath of office to all elected and appointed officials, Attend all meetings, prepare agendas, review council submissions, prepare and certify council records, documents, maps, etc. Institute and set up lawful procedures and timetables for passage of all measures by the city council, including zoning amendments, general audiences, and loan orders. We receive and record and maintain custody of all births, deaths, and marriages, and consider evidence and make decisions as to allowing amendments by law a rejection of amendments. On licensing, processing properly prepared and conforming licenses and license renewals through the city council with issuance of letter of rejection. License include, but not now limited to, secondhand articles, junk, bowling alleys, pool tables, bazaars, hunting, fishing, dog licenses, signs over public ways, gasoline stations, and others. Most required annual renewals may require public hearings set up and published by the city clerk with legal notification. We have the custodian of records, custodian of all city records as provided by law and records for which no provision has been made by law. These include maintaining records of appointment of all municipal boards and commissions, rules and regulation of boards and commissions, city deeds, lease agreements, all city contracts, oath of office administered to all department heads, appointed and elected officials with certification of each officer authority to act by state law, provide copies of conflict of interest statute and open meeting laws. If you'd like, I could go on and on and on, but I don't want anybody to fall asleep on me. <laughs> Thank you. Would you like me to continue or have you had enough at this point? I think we're good. You're good? Okay. Then I, let me just add this to you. That's a point of interest. City clerk's office is a very very busy office. Most it people know that because we have people standing in the doorway most of the day. 
But to give you some information, we did 354,800 copies of certified copies for oh. people of the van. What did he say? We did uh, another 300 and, uh, I'm sorry, 471,751 copies for the council. We took in $310,425 to do these services in part. And the second phase of that brought in $212,000. That's a lot of money and a lot of work when you're taking it in at 10 and 15 and $20 a shot. So that's, uh, that is about what we do and the monies that we take in. And now I suppose you wanna get onto the budget and justify the existence of the office. So I'm open for questions. Any uh, questions for the clerk? Going once, going twice. No, we just appreciate Mr. It. Clerk, stay there in uh, mm -hmm. uh, agenda number two, please. City Council, Anthony J. Zioli, Clerk. Okay, we have the City Council. I'll give you the service activities. Enact all legislation for the city, ordinances, amendments to ordinances, rules according to the City Charter, and the Mass Home Rule Amendment of 1966. Bear the responsibility for all city finances. Approve the budget. Decrease proposed expenditures if necessary. Authorize individual department appropriations. Approve appropriations of sufficient monies for public schools as requested by the school committee in accordance with Mass Law. Redistribute appropriate funds. Authorize appropriation for city projects or improvements. Maintain the following committees to examine appropriate matters and recommend its findings to the entire council. Finance, consider all appropriation, loans, and other financial matters. Ordinance and rules, consider advisability, merit, form, and legality of ordinances referred to it. Consider all proposed rules of orders for the council guidance. Public safety, consider problems of public safety, particularly those of the police and fire departments. Licenses, consider all petitions for licenses, permits, and franchises, and recommend its finding. Public relations, represent the city before the General Court of Massachusetts, consider complaints against public service entities, consider the prospects for industrial development in the city. Accounts, examine and approve or disapprove all accounts and claims. Real estate, consider matters pertaining to the sale of city land or the purpose of land by the city. Confirm and deny various mayoral appointments to municipal government positions. Consider all petitions and similar papers. Conduct hearings. Adopt rules for its own proceedings when necessary and upon the recommendation of the Committee of Audits and Rules. Elect by a majority of the council a city clerk to hold office for three, three years, excuse me. Elect the president every year to preside over the council meetings and perform any duties prescribed under uh, chapter 43 of the general laws. Decide on license applications under the recommend, uh, recommendation of the license committee. Does not include licenses for the sale of liquor or the service of victuals. Effect compliance with any and all applicable sections of the city charter, chapter 43 of the general laws and the laws of the commonwealth. Department mission, the Brockton City Council is a separate branch of city government and is not a line department. Its mission is to service its legislative branch and has the appropriated authority. And that's what I have here for you. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, anyone uh, has any questions for the clerk with reference to the clerk with the city council's budget? Going once? I don't. Go right ahead, sir. I have no question and I have no problem with the budget. I, <clears throat> I do want to share with colleagues though, this is a half a billion dollar spending plan. And I don't think the public realizes we, we have no staff. Matter of fact, we don't have an office. We work out of our homes. And hours are spent on this budget. Um, I'm not sure we're going to be able to do justice to our constituents if we don't have some independent budget analyst, some accountant, someone to help us because this is getting complicated, folks. This is, this is starting to become time consuming. So I'm, I'm just throwing it out there for whoever the mayor and the council is next January. Uh, I just think we're gonna have to have some help. I mean, it's just getting that much more consuming in terms of analyzing and understanding and 
projecting and then finally making an intelligent decision on the budget. So half a billion dollars is a lot of money, folks, and, mm -hmm. and we're responsible for making sure that it's properly allocated where it should be. And uh, thank you. Council Sullivan. Mr. Chairman, just a uh, point of information. The City of Quincy, Massachusetts City Council does have a CPA. It's an ordinance-driven position specific to assisting them on the budget, something that I've mentioned in the past, and I think that we should, without question, uh, move forward relative to an or ordinance on that. Because again, as, as Council Fowell just said, not everybody has a CPA or an accountant or an MBA, and you know, it would be helpful. It'd be money well spent, in my humble opinion. Thank you. I agree, and as the, uh, council, uh, the as the clerk said, you know we do have the ability to write ordinances in the city, and mm -hmm. uh, we've got no one to blame but ourselves. Uh, thank you, Mr. Clerk. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, something for the clerk? Yeah, just a statement. Um, we got two what uh, Council Fowell and uh, Council Sullivan stated. Um, as somebody who's actually living, I think that uh, we, as you know, councilors, do need somebody to actually help us out, giving the responsibility that we have, because I think that sometimes. Uh, we may have the desire to respond to every emails, every phone calls, but you know we do have other responsibility. I think that as somebody who's living in council, I would truly advise you guys to actually think about how you can approach the situation. We got to bring at least one person or two people that can actually solely work for the council because it is a lot of work to do, especially Thank for you. those of us who are council at large. I mean, I believe that I am not a CPA. Um, I probably have no knowledge whatsoever in that field. But <coughs> I think having the ability to actually understand the complexity of that $450 million as opposed to just read it will be beneficial not only to us but also to the city because this is taxpayers' money and I think what used to be done in the city five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago can be changed. And of course, it is our job as legislators to actually draft laws that can actually govern the city. I know the clerk would be more than happy to actually help us in regard to how to approach this, but I would encourage you, my colleagues, to think about this, not just talk it out, but think about what are the best ways in which we can actually bring someone to actually help us out. I just want to make that statement. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, sir. Uh, if, if I just may add to that, ahead, sir. I think as you know, I've been researching this and trying to uh, develop a department, so to speak, for the council. Uh, we've made some headway there. Uh, we need room, we need space. All the departments mm -hmm. will tell you that. That's what we lack, you know. So to develop a, uh, another portion of an office, but with no place for that staff to, to operate in is, you know. Well, Mr. Clerk, we can just cut everybody's budget until we get a room. Well, that's fine. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> Thank you, sir. But uh, we are trying to develop it. We're looking for space, and uh, it has been mentioned to the mayor. And uh, I think the main point right now is to kind of find the location and then go on with staffing and what have you. But there are things in my budgets for this year, upcoming year, that have taken into consideration uh, what usage they may be of if we do develop this this office so that a great amount of funding will not be necessary. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for all that you do to help us out. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Madam number three, please. Assessor, John O'Donnell, Chairman. What do you mean? Mr. O'Donnell, <laughs> welcome to the on. City Council Chambers. Good evening, Councils. Uh, the primary function of the Assessor's Office is to value all property in the community annually at full market value as outlined in chapter 59 of the Massachusetts General Laws. The Assessor's Office is responsible for the administration of all laws and regulations regarding property tax assessment. <coughs> the Assessors are required by Massachusetts General Law and very acts of legislature to perform the appraisal of approximately 27,620 parcels of property. This includes residential, commercial, industrial, utilities, and personal property. The office processes over 80,000 motor vehicle and boat excise tax bills yearly, commits the amount of taxes to be collected, including betterments, water and sewer, refuge liens to the treasurer collector's office, handles all requests for abatements and exemption applications, review and update city records of all deeds for Brockton, looking for ownership and other changes, subdivision and merges. We review all and inspect all properties for which a building permit has been issued yearly. 
Any questions to the assessors relative to his budget? Council Sullivan. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Good evening, Mr. O'Donnell. Good evening. Um, just two quick questions, John. When I look at the um, department request for two line items, one's a consultant, which was 67,000, mm -hmm. um, and it was, uh, that was your request, recommended a 164. Well, could you just explain we the have, purpose of the reval. consultant? What is it? We have reval in 2021, so I uh, forgot to put the money in initially because most of the work will be done during 2020. 2020. So that's for the consultant. And the line item right above that is the reval. Okay. They're, both, they're both for uh, reval. One's for personal property. The other one is for real property. And, and so we don't do that in-house. We, we get a consultant to yeah. work in conjunction with your office? Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Else? Councillor Nikesh. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for being here. Um, I have a question about sewer betterments. I was in a meeting on the third floor last week and I was told we no longer do sewer, sewer bet or sewer sidewalk or street betterments. And I just very quickly wanted to mention it to you because in the mission statement that you just read, That's you include that among your, your job, your duties. That's always been our mission statement. Yes. Do we do sewer, street? I don't think so, not in, currently no, no. We do not? No. Do you have an idea? It's done why? in the past. Part, that's in the past? Yes. Why don't we currently do them? That would be a question. For if there are no objections, uh, we can have the DPW commissioner come up. <sighs> objections? It's just a budget. Go ahead, sir. Good evening, no counselors. Um, I believe that was done in the past, council, because of the, the way <coughs> the system was built um, when it first started. And the system's pretty much in place now, so we don't need that anymore. <coughs> That was just in case we, we ran sewer and, and we ran it down the street and each and every homeowner, that's what I'm being told years ago, had to pay for that to be installed. Mm, right. So most of our sewer system is installed now, so we don't, we, don't, we don't need it or we don't use it. And what about streets and sidewalks? Um, streets and sidewalks, is that's a good question. I, I, it's, we usually um, use Chapter 90 money for that. Okay. Because a, a betterment is passing that on to the homeowner. And, that's right. And that's... In, in my years as a conveyancing <coughs> attorney, I paid off a great many street and sidewalk betterments, okay, yeah. in, in other communities perhaps, but they were very common not so long ago. Yeah, I, it's, since I've been with the city, I don't remember, it's, it's, you know, it's the 15, 16 years that I've been in charge, we've never used a betterment. Okay. To do the streets and sidewalks, we use the Chapter 90 money or whatever funds we have in our, our own budget to do it. Okay, thank okay. you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Donnell. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Are, you, are you good? Yes. Anyone else? Hearing none, you're dismissed, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Madam Clerk, uh, number four, please. Treasurer, Collector, Martin S. Brophy, Treasurer. Mr. Brophy. Good evening, councillors. Um, I actually have two separate offices, so I have two mission statements. Uh, the collector's office is responsible for collecting and accounting for uh, currently close to $200 million in annual tax and user fee revenue. Um, the collector's office does not create a bill. It cannot change a bill. Uh, real estate, personal property, boat excise, all come from the assessor's office and committed to the collector just to collect the bill. Uh, the water sewer trash bills are created by DPW and again committed to the collector to collect. <coughs> the excise tax bills actually come from the Registry of Motor Vehicles uh, and the assessors get the information and commit it to the collector to collect. Uh, we also produce municipal lien certificates uh, which is a legal document stating what is owed on a property. And we also perform tax taking procedures, which is perfecting a lien at the Registry of Deeds for delinquent taxes, uh, which mm -hmm. allows the city the right to collect that money. Uh, if that process isn't done within two and a half years of the end of the fiscal year, uh, the city cannot perfect that lien. Uh, for the Treasurer's Office, um, Treasurer's office basically handles all the money of the city, um, including what the collector takes in it, it as well as all other departments. 
Um, we're responsible for accounting for that money to keep cash books and reconcile that to the, the ledger. Um, we actually disperse the money uh, through accounts payable and payroll. Uh, we maintain um, a breakdown of the daily receipts. Um, it's our duty to keep record and to put it in the right accounts. Um, reconcile all bank accounts. Uh, we act as the custodian for trust funds. Um, in, once a tax taking is done, it's the treasurer's responsibility to collect that money at, um, once the lien has been perfected and also foreclose if no payments are ever made on that tax taking. Um, the only other thing we do is actually borrow money for the city, uh, which tomorrow we actually have a bond sale for uh, three sales actually for close to $13 million. And I'll take questions just on the <laughs> treasurer collector budget. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Brophy. Uh, questions relative to his budget, uh, Council Borgak. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Brophy. Um, what are you borrowing the $13 million for? Uh, there's a list of projects. Some of them are school repairs. Uh, there's three school repairs. Okay. There's the street lighting project, uh, some water mains, uh, the garage, and the elevator. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. I mean, I imagine we'll see more um, involved. And um, under, I'm sorry, trying to put this together here, with the, um, the custodian trust funds, they always say that um, we have a DW field park. The city does not, is not a custodian. We are a beneficiary of that trust okay. fund. Uh, that was left to a trust. It, it was not left to the city to invest the money. And okay. It was, a, a, we're just, we get a portion of the proceeds. And is it different every year or? Uh, it's a percentage uh, for a DW field. Um, I believe it's 25% and for school scholarships, I believe it's seven and a half percent. And can you give us an idea how much it is for the DW field? Uh, uh, it's probably about 100,000 per year that the city gets. Okay, and that I imagine goes to the Parks and Rec to yeah, take the, care of it. Okay. The All specific, right. as part of the, the DW field uh, will okay. the, in the trust fund, there's specific use for it. So. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Madam Councillor Nicastro. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Rofi. Good evening. I have a question. On page 220, looking at um, treasurer purchase of services, okay? And I'm looking at the line of the, uh, the amounts that we approved, which is under 2019 mayor recommended. And then I'm looking at the column to the right, 2019 revised budget, which I guess we could say would be your actual expenses. And in every, every one of these line items except two, your expenses exceeded what we appropriated, so much so that $41,529 was spent in, in excess. And yet, when I look at what the budget is for tonight, it's, it's, um, it's far it's less. It's actually a revised budget. This doesn't show expenditures for okay. 2019. Okay. So it's a revised bu budget. It's so some of it were, was encumbrances of money some of it could be that we transferred money between items, line items, um, but that's just a revised budget. Okay, and even though it's far less than what was spent last year? The 18? Uh, no, no, the 19. Well, currently in 19. <clears throat> yes. Um. So 2018 is the only expenditures on the sheet. Well, the 72 is what we approved last year. And isn't the 113.666 what's been spent? No, that's, that's my that's budget. That's what we adjusted? No, that's the budget. Okay. That's my budget for 2019. Okay. All right. Thank you. Are you all set there, Council? Yes, I am. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Anyone else? 
Uh, Councilor Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Profi. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Marty, relative to the uh, the sale of properties that we take in tax title, since mm -hmm. Attorney Albanese is no longer doing that, um, are we are we keeping 100% in-house now? I'm actually not the real estate custodian. Yeah, that but you, you're privy to that. I, I just look yeah. at it because you're legal. Um, line item. I think the the last auction that was held in auctioneer was brought in. Okay. Um, and again, usually uh, in the past, the auctioneer would have a buyer's premium. Um, the legal work. It would be um, covered based on that. Yeah. Okay. So right. it's a percentage. It, it's kind of how Attorney Albanese was doing it, but you know, it was a buyer's premium. It's always been a buyer's premium. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. So who's the uh, real st real estate custodian? City solicitor. Or his his office. Uh, anyone else? Any additional questions to the treasurer? Thank you, sir. You may stay there for the next item. Madam Clerk, the next one, please. Treasurer's debt service, Martin S. Brophy, treasurer. Mr. Brophy, any, any questions? You're going to go borrow money again. <laughs> so what does this department do? Pays borrow the money. debt. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone has any questions with regards to that particular item? Going once, twice, hearing none, you're dismissed, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Number six, please. Your numbers are messed up. Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> Parking Authority, Robert H. Malley, Executive Director. Mr. Malley, hey, how, are you? how are you? Hi. Uh, the primary mission of the Brockton Parking Authority is to assist in the economic development and revitalization of Brockton's downtown area. Uh, our goals are to provide and maintain the highest level of service at our parking facilities for our customers to work with the downtown community to ensure that parking uh, policies appropriately address the needs of the downtown area, to plan and develop new parking facilities in order to meet the demand for parking, and to develop and implement financial safeguards to protect the revenue of the parking, parking authority uh, in order to achieve these stated goals. And if you don't mind, I have a short statement uh, regarding the budget that we put in. Uh, after 10 years of submitting mostly level funded budget requests, uh, this year's submission could not be level funded due to the costs of setting up and running the new garage scheduled to open in December. Uh, we have put our best efforts into estimating these costs using the expenses of running the Adams garage of similar size as a reference and prorating the costs over the period from December until June to arrive at our budget request. We are confident that the revenue from this new garage will exceed the expenses. Uh, in order to clarify which costs are associated with the new garage, and which are associated with continuing operations of the parking authority, we have prepared a spreadsheet which you should have in your supplementary budget. Uh, as you know, the uh, parking authority budget does not derive uh, from the city's general fund, but instead from our reserve funds, which are more than sufficient to cover our requested budget. Since this may very well be my last opportunity to present the budget to the council, I would like to publicly thank all my employees for their hard work throughout my time at the authority and also to thank my co-workers in all the city departments, our elected officials, uh, both at the city and state level, uh, for your assistance and cooperation, and especially thank the volunteers who have served on my board during my tenure. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you, Mr. Malley. Uh, question, Borgard, Councilor, please. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Well, first of all, I just want you to be able to highlight a little bit about, I'm big on the <coughs> revenue part of this, because everyone's saying, oh, we don't need, well, some people that uh, aren't in downtown say we don't need the parking garage, and we already, and I just think it's important for people to realize <coughs> that not only do we need the parking garage, but all the plans and um, revenue that's starting to come in from what we refer to as the smart parking meters. I like that thing called revenue, so we're going to really push that. <laughs> right. And you'll be happy to know, Councillor, since you come to all of our meetings, uh, that we did launch the Passport app this right. past, since our last meeting, uh, and that people are already uh, using the app to pay for the meters out there, so you can pay by cell phone. So. Thank you, Councillor. Thank done? you. Yes. Councillor Cruz. I don't usually do this, but I do want to just thank you. You've taken a job that uh, can be very dry and be unimaginative, and you've put imagination and, and been a big part. In fact, just looking at the 
mission statement. That's not the mission statement of the original parking authority. No, it's not. And, and uh, it's really not a mission statement of a parking authority. You've used, hmm. you've used your personality, your brains, mm -hmm. and your vision to be a big part of what's going on downtown. And I personally want to thank you for it. We, Bob and I were just looking, say we can't believe it's 10 years. Mm -hmm. So yeah. well, the fact that you're hey. leaving, you're not happy. Thanks for, thanks for your work. I was just about to cry, so now you're going to make him cry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Councillor Isaac. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Malley. Um, I was a little surprised I of your announcement. I, I'm very saddened, but um, as Councillor Cruz said, you we're very proud of uh, the work that you've done and what you've done with the Parking Authority. My question to you is um, you have in your mission statement that you uh, rehabilitate parking authority lots through upgrades, surface overlay, seal coating, and restriping. Do you do that in-house, or do we use the same company that uses? It depends on the size of the lot of what it needs. Uh, okay. um, the major projects, uh, obviously, we don't have um, we don't have the machines to, to rip up pavement, right? Um, but as far as sealing, striping, uh, we've been taking that on ourselves rather than rather than we set up because we have the people who are capable of doing it. Well, I think that's great. That's um, I know that's a question that usually comes up, and I've asked in the past if we could do the. Um, yeah, it's a lot cheaper to do it ourselves. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Monaghan. Yes, and I don't usually do this either, but I echo Councillor Cruz's sentiments, and uh, Bob is like one of the smartest guys I know, and he really has done a great job for the city for 10 years, and Councillor Fowler and myself maybe we'll pull something out to keep you here a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm not we really hate to miss you. We I'm not really planning on you. going anywhere until the garage is finished and running properly. Right now, it's scheduled to open in December. I told the mayor I would stay until the thing is running properly. Okay, so, so we, we can but I do we can delay to that. Be out of here before budget time next year. <laughs> they might have some gas problems over there, so you might be staying longer. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, Mr. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Um, uh, Mr. Malley, uh, I, I was hoping that somebody would ask you this question, but I guess they didn't get asked, so I'm going to ask it. Okay. Um, parking enforcement in down in, I know you do it in the downtown area, but it doesn't get done in Campello mm -hmm. or Montello. Mm -hmm. Are there any plans to do that as well? Because I hear that from currently no. Our, our guys are on foot, right? I mean, I'm saying hiring more people, do some more. No plans? No, not at this point. I, I got my hands pretty much full with what I got now. I mean, my successor may <laughs> may have plans to do that. I, it wouldn't really be a bad idea. I mm -hmm. mean, there's. Uh, I mean, I hear that from businesses all the time. There's shopping plazas, right? <coughs> fire lanes that could be patrolled all the time. There's, a, there's, there's plenty of opportunity out there. Yeah. Right. But it never has been part of the Park Authority, at least since I've been here. And um, no, I don't have plans to take that on in my final days here. <laughs> good, good to hear. Thank you, sir. And thanks for your service to the city. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, number seven, please. Public property, James Kasiri, Superintendent. Mr. Kasiri, how are you? How are we? I'm well, how are you, Council? The, ele the elevator maintenance guy. Yes, the elevator's working <laughs> well, thank you. Um, our mission statement is to assist the orderly development of the city in commercial zones and residential zones and try to maintain a certain quality of life through code enforcement for our residents. And the functions of our department are all building, wiring, plumbing permits are issued through this department and all subsequent inspections take place. And um, we maintain permanent records and plans of all of those certificates. All certificates of occupancies are issued through this department after proper inspections. All certificates of inspections come from this office. That means all places of assembly, such as churches, schools, gymnasium, bar rooms, nightclubs, multifamily homes are all inspected by this department. We are responsible for the code enforcement of the zoning ordinance of the City of Brockton, including overseeing the Zoning Board of Appeals. We constantly monitor the vacant and the building and abandoned properties in we uh, administer the abandoned building registry. All inspections, all inspectors, maintenance people and custodians and myself are on call 24-7, 365 days a year 
and respond to emergency calls at all hours, such as but not limited to fires, car crashes into buildings, mishaps at residential and commercial properties regardless, um, regarding building safety issues, heating calls, AC calls, plumbing and electrical emergencies, as well as other emergencies and board ups of vacant and abandoned properties. We prepare all buildable lot determinations and all legal use determinations. I supervise a custodial staff. They are responsible for City Hall, which they do a great job, War Memorial, and the Council on Aging. The Public Property Department is responsible for maintenance of all publicly owned buildings. We have electricians, plumbers, plumbers carpenters, HVAC people, and a supervisor. Buildings such as fire stations, police stations, schools, libraries, city hall, war memorial, council on aging, the swimming pools, all DPW buildings, all park buildings, golf course and cemetery buildings, et cetera. And so with that, I would like to let you know that it would be impossible for me to do my job without the excellent people I have working for me. I have excellent custodians and maintenance people. My staff at City Hall is, is you can't surpass them. And I have an excellent supervisor of building maintenance and my executive assistant. And without these people, I couldn't do what I do. Mm -hmm. And with that, I'll take any questions. Questions to Mr. Kasseri relative to his, uh, Councillor Cruz. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, well, I don't like to say thanks for being here. That's what we do. A um, <laughs> couple of questions. One, um, the police station. How bad is it? The police station, when it was built, was a Cadillac building, but that was a long time ago. And since then, they, we've, they've put new offices and new petitions and different things in there that have kind of cut the building up and, and made it into a different building. But I will tell you, in the past few years, we've put um, a new AC system there. We put all new windows in the building. We put new boilers, new air handlers. Um, we've made the building as comfortable as we can make it. However, it is at the point where it has outlived its usefulness. It's, it's been a great building, but it's to the point where uh, we definitely could use a new police station. There's a lot more work to be done there. So it's at the point where it's tough for you guys to, to, to really do any work to well, there's, there are some issues we just can't solve. Yeah. Like the, the linking in the entryway down on Commercial Street is under the ground. We would have to excavate the entire front of the building to, to put some kind of patchwork over that tunnel they have going in there. And it's an, almost an, an impossibility. So water is always coming in there. That's, that's just one example of uh, what the building's like. I mean, it's outdated. And then uh, the mayor mentioned last night in his uh, presentation about uh, you and some other departments going over to the old DA's office, correct? I heard him say that, yes. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so are you not aware of too much of it yet, or have you been part of? I was, I talked to Troy uh, probably about, about a month ago, and he had mentioned that the city was looking into um, renting space over there for departments. I inquired what departments those might be, and he, they didn't have a definite answer at that time, but he did hint at those three departments. Um, at that time, I told him that would, that would be a tough move because these departments are all interconnected. We deal with the DPW on a daily basis. If somebody comes in for, uh, to apply for zoning, we send them down to the assessor's office. We send them to get a municipal lien certificate. All of our buildable lot determinations are made in collaboration with the uh, uh, engineering department across the hall and, and the law department in many cases. So the departments that deal with the public are all interconnected. Um, those are just my thoughts, but so I, uh, at Troy's behest that I, I went over and took a look at the facility over there and um, that if we were, if that were to take place, that building is in need of about $1.2 million worth of renovations before that could happen. And is it budgeted for us to do that work or for the county to do that work? That I time? think there's, a, there's money in my budget of $120,000 and I suspect that that would be to make those moves happen if the building ever becomes 
to the point where we would move people into it. Once the county does the work. I would say the county would do the work. It's their building. I mean, that's, <laughs> this is all off the cuff here. I mean, you're asking me a question that I haven't had the chance to have many conversations about it. I will tell you that the building, is, the facade of that building is deplorable. Yes. Um, there's no windows in it except for a few on Belmont Street. There's no air handlers. There's no AC units. There, all the in, internal structure of the building would have to be removed. There's moldy carpeting. Yes. The um, the um, superintendent over there told me he thinks the boiler came over on the Mayflower. Things like that. I mean. I think you, know, you have some familiarity with that I building, do. I believe. It's much the same as it was. The pot, I think that we were under the impression the whole building was renovated by the county, when in fact, when I went over there, I was surprised to find out the only pot that was renovated is the pot that's being occupied by John Buckley and his crew. Oh. The rest of it still remains as it always was. So, so you don't sound too excited to me about that. Hmm? You don't sound too excited about that prospect. I think that probably if you ask me what's the most difficult move you could throw at me, it would be moving the building department or the DPW out of this building. We occupy many spaces in this building. Mm. I have plans for every building in this city that date back over 100 years, stored in the attic, in the closet in the basement. I have, um, on a daily basis, when I come, this building looks the way it does. It's got my fingerprints all over it. Every day I come in here, I go through this building to make sure it looks well, the way it, it does. Clean it, then. Get your fingerprints off of it. Literally. <laughs> I mean, since I've worked here, I've uh, gotten a generator for this building. I have new boilers, new chiller. I redid the GAR room. I installed the rotunda you see out there. That used to be a flat floor when I came here. Um, we refurbished the clock tower. We did uh, the whole floor out there is brand new. We have a new elevator. We have upgrades in the law department, the DPW, the voting IT uh, room downstairs. We doubled the size of it last year. We put a new deputy collector in, a new tax office, new planning. Uh, I just did the CFO's office over. Um, the lead department in City Hall was, I, I was the lead department when we did this renovation out here in the parks. Um, we have a new license commission office, new counters in the assessor's office, new working um, in the, the license commission, a new mail room, sailings in this chamber we, we redid. I, I, with Kevin O'Gorman, fixed that corner over there and maintained the historic value of this building by not letting that plaster fall apart. That plaster was all coming down, and rather than take it down and replace it, Kevin, uh, Kevin especially came up with a plan where we staged that and we glued the original ceiling back in place. So that's a 125-year-old ceiling that otherwise would have been on the floor. S and my point to all this is I have to be in this building for this building to look this way, in my opinion. So if this move does take place, I will still maintain an office here much the same way as other departments do. I'll have to be here walk across on a daily basis to make sure my custodians are doing what they're supposed to do, make sure nobody's going to slip and fall out there on the ice, check the temperature of the boiler on a daily basis or the chiller on a daily basis, and these are all the things I do in this building. This building needs me. <laughs> and did Howard Newton tell you what it looked like when it got first done? Or <laughs> huh? Did Howard Newton tell you what the building ceiling looked like when it yeah, first he, got he put was up uh, my biggest years critic. ago? <laughs> <laughs> and also, we refurbished some of the paintings this year downstairs as well. Yes, yeah, right. I saw that. All right. It's the Thank stuff you. We do. Thanks for your. It'd be uh, a tough move. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Council Power. <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening. I actually was not going to get into this too much tonight, but Councillor Cruz kind of piqued my I curiosity. was actually hoping we wouldn't, but. Well, I know, I, I, I but can't here we help are. myself. Uh, <clears throat> it, it would seem to me that, why would we put, uh, rhetorical question, why would we put a million two into a building we don't own? And then, I don't. Uh, and, then, and then pay lease payments. Do we know what the lease payments would I be? I don't know that part. I think the, <clears throat> the piece, I think we were under the impression that building was all done over. Yeah. I believe that must be the impression we were under, you know. Okay. And, if, and we are in need of space at City Hall. But so in my experience, and I've been doing this for a long time here, when you have an office that isn't functioning properly and, it, and it's in different locations, you don't take the offices that are functioning properly and move them properly mm -hmm. and move them. You take the one that's not 
working correctly and you fix that one. You don't fix what's not broken, yeah. in my mind. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. You're familiar with all of the city buildings. Correct. Don't we have space at War Memorial on the second floor? Aren't there other buildings where if, if there is a department here at, at City Hall that's really feeling strangled, that we might have some options that wouldn't include having to go to, to a county building that needs a lot of work and incur lease payments? I, we have the entire second floor. I don't know what the um, trustees would think of that. I know it's going unused. And what we did downstairs with David Farrell and the um, emergency management, mm -hmm. it, we could mirror it upstairs and we could make uh, some beautiful office space up there, which would free up a lot of space in this building. And we own that building. You know, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but I take it there wasn't a committee that was formed with the key stakeholders weighing in on what we're going to do and when we're going to do it. This is kind of something that evolved rather quickly during the budget process and now is before us. Is that, is yes. that a fair statement? I, I would say yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I would just say to my colleagues, um, you know, we're, we're six months away from another mayoral term and another council term, and I don't know who's going to be mayor, and I don't know who's going to be sitting here. And if you're going to decentralize city government and you're going to make that kind of a discretionary move, um, the next group of people coming in might have an entirely different philosophy. So if this were going to happen, I would just suggest that it happen with, with a committee formed after January 1, 2020, get all the key stakeholders together, look at the different options, and go from there. But I think to pull this off or to set in motion something this late in our term and in the mayor's term uh, uh, does an injustice to the people who may be serving on January 1, 2020. Just my opinion. So thank you, Mr. Kasseri. You're welcome. <coughs> thank you, Councillor Councilor Yanera. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and Commissioner, thank you for all that uh, <coughs> you do and, and your staff uh, do as well, <laughs> because without, without you, I don't know what uh, our buildings would look like today, to be truthful with you, so I, I do truly appreciate that, and I know the people that work within them and even... And, and that's cities. my staff. When I say my fingerprints, it doesn't mean I did this all myself. No, <laughs> and I, I, I've directed these things to happen. Right, right. I have a great maintenance people that work for me that do all this work and I, I know they're watching so I want to make that clear to them. <laughs> I'm not saying I did all this. So. But, but there has to be a leader so you're the leader. If it, if it failed I would take the hit so if, <laughs> if it succeeds I'll take the credit as well. No matter what. Anytime right. I've been a manager I'm in charge and everyone works together with me and, and that's the way I look at it so no. you know but in any case um, let me just ask you this question um, just because it uh, struck a chord when uh, um, Mr. Brophy was in front of us and he's going to borrow money tomorrow, um, as he said. Uh, one thing that's uh, come out to, to all of us in the past year, and I think even taxpayers have been asking us as, as well, is do, do we have a final total figure on what the elevator expense was, what the cost was? Do we know what it finally ended up being? I'm being told 430, 430,000. 430,000? Yeah. That's it total. I mean, and, and, and any more to be expanded. Uh, and uh, I don't want to hold uh, my assistant to that. She just right. she doesn't have that figure in front of her, but she does pay the bill, so she's probably pretty okay. close to accurate. Now, could there be any other further expenses? I mean, if they had to still come in to do some re repairs uh, or, or whatever, um, is that still through the part of through the contract, or is it? Or they are under amendment? obligation to maintain this for a year after the start update. Okay. Uh -huh. But I had some conversations with them because I was a little disappointed that after the start update we had some glitches. So I asked them if they could extend that start update and then they seemed more than willing to do that. Okay. And the, the elevator company has been great. Okay. I mean this is a high tech machine and it really it was a shakedown cruise that took a little longer than I wanted and I'm crossing my fingers. I, I believe we have all the bugs out now and, and they respond immediately and they're, they're perfect gentlemen when they okay. come here. So, so they, they, very pleased with they've that. Ex they've extended that part of it. Okay. I just wanted to see where, where it was all at. Yep. Appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Borger. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you and your team for everything you do. Now, 
when you when people say public property, well, you know, you, you mentioned Council on Aging, whatever. Now you mentioned at one time, and you know, you may correct me if I'm wrong here. I will. This almost <laughs> thank you. Almost 400 properties considered abandoned that are on the records for this city. I think that's high. I think through the course of the years we've been running it, there's <coughs> been that number of them, but many of them are reoccupied. I think an accurate figure would be closer to 280. Okay, well, that's still an awful lot. It's now. a lot, and we maintain them all, so it's a, that's, it's, that's it's a, a real huge, huge demand. On it's a lot of new work that's come the way of this department in the past 10 years. It, and that's not counting the rocks and shaws, which I know we're going to talk about later, but a lot of stuff is coming this way. And right now we're in the middle of opening two swimming pools and we'll run the two swimming pools till they close. And that takes two of my people away from me every day, seven days a week, from now until those pools close. And I only have eight, so. Wow. We do a lot, they, they get a lot done. Those guys get a lot done. If I could continue to ask you, because I did have um, some other, um, you know, situation there. I was, uh, you know, you had an oil burner repairman vacant unfunded. Is it more costly to do outsourcing, I hate that word, but anyway, um, or to keep an individual on staff? Well, we have one HVAC guy now, and I like to have two of every trade because people go on vacations. Mm -hmm. And if my AC guy's on vacation in 90 degree weather and something goes down, <laughs> for instance, the library AC, uh -uh. I need an individual I can send over there to take care of it. So that's, I need that person. Okay, no, no, I don't, I don't think it's an extravagance, you understand. No. Now getting back to these abandoned properties, could any of them be considered functional? <coughs> Many of them are really nice properties. Really? Yeah, I'm, I don't, I can't speak for why the banks do what they do. And, and linger and hold on to them. I don't understand it, that aspect of it. A lot of, there's a lot of nice properties people could pick up and, and make really nice homes out of, and commercial buildings as well. Okay, so that's what I was curious about, because in some cases, if the, you're saying this is abandoned property, so technically the city owns it because of the tax liens? No, what we do is we charge them a fee. It's not a fine, it's a fee. Okay. It's right. a fee that provides us the funds necessary to maintain these buildings. We board them up, we clean them up, we make them safe, and we try to, if, if you live next door to one of these and it's, it's not looking too good, the, the, when we show up, the, the neighbors are very appreciative of what we do, and the DPW is very instrumental in that. Oh, yes. They do the mowing and the cleanup part of yes. it. We do the securing of the building we, and the health department. We all work really well together on this, so. It's a collaborative effort. Oh no, I know, I've, w I've witnessed it. I mean, with the housing, I see most of the time these houses, you know, go right back on the market. I mean, you have three and, you know, n n near me, and, um, you know, two have already, you know, ha stuff is happening, what have you, <coughs> the other one is a little bit lagging, but still. But I am curious with the commercial buildings because in some instances, wouldn't it be better to, to negotiate something to maybe have the property for our, you know, like you said, and some departments are really tight, or there's, you know, need more space, or for storage, because that was a big discussion with that municipal um, building evaluation that we had. We don't analysis. own the buildings, though. <laughs> no, I realize we don't own it, but it's so the, how would I say it? It just seems like you're, so in other words, you're a total a service for these banks, basically, to clean. And maintain a lot of building. some of the banks are responsive, but when we don't wait, if the building's open and some kids are going to get in there, or oh, no. someone's going in and going to go strip the copper, or the kids are doing drugs in there and it's ruining the neighborhood, we don't wait for the bank. We go board it up. We go in there with the cops, make sure it's cleaned out. We call the DPW up. They come clean it up. They do a great job, and um, we we try to maintain them as best we can, but we don't own them, so we don't have any rights to really enter them after they're boarded and things no, like I, that. No, I, I follow that, but in the, in the other cases where there's some buildings that, again, there's tax liens on, you still had to take care of some of those, and I'll highlight the Petronelli building, for example. Yeah, we own that, well, we, we got rid of that one now. But we got rid of that, but that's, I guess that's what I was trying to, yeah. you know, work at and see if there was other opportunities yeah. where either e you can sell the building, or you could you know, turn around and, and use it, you know, in this case it was an auction, and use it because we're looking for space. That's, that's why I was you know, leading up to 
but thank you. Thank You're you for welcome. your patience on that. Appreciate yep. it. Thank you, uh, Council Durani-Court, followed by Sullivan, <coughs> Isaac, and Nikesh. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good to see you, uh, Mr. Kasseri. Um, good question. Well, I think I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. The first one is that uh, I wasn't going to talk about this tonight, but I think we started it. Before this budget coming out, were you aware of or were you somewhat approached about you possibly moving out? Um, it was mentioned. I mean, no, I, I've before. never had any. We, Troy and I have had some short discussions about it. Sort of. But um, I, I haven't had that much involvement in it. Excellent. So, uh, well, I personally talk to you a lot about some issues that we have, and sometimes, not sometimes, all the times, your staff um, have been amazing to whatever that I'm asking for. With eight people, I think that your office uh, has been doing an amazing job, and I commend you on that one. Uh, personally, I know that your office, uh, in my opinion, I think is one of the most important office in the city of Brockton, given the responsibility that you have, and also given the fact that you have to be on the hour 24-7. I was called in at 3 o'clock last night, 3 in the morning, car so hit a building on Main Street. The reason I'm saying this is the fact that I want folks to understand the responsibility that you have as opposed to different departments. So I strongly believe that if there were one department that should have moved out, your department would have been the last. And if there is one department that I do not want to see out of this city hall, it would be your department. And I mean that. So as you know, the gentleman was making his public statement in regard to his budget last night. I was somewhat shocked in regard to possibly you moving out. I personally is against it, I can tell you that flat. And although I was trying my best not to talk about it tonight because I know there'll be opportunity. I was actually hoping we wouldn't. It's very uncomfortable. But well, well, let's face it though, but I want folks to understand that, like, you know, your job as somebody who's on the clock 24 hours. So it is a disgrace to me that you are part of that group that could possibly move out. Nobody knows what's going to happen. But another question, does the War Memorial have enough space, let's say, that they would like to go in there? Again, the trustees are in charge of that, and the mayor would have to have conversations with them, but I could fit some nice, I could make some nice office space over there. I won't mention any offices I have in <laughs> mind, but I know um, that would be up to the mayor. But I think we could, if we could occupy the space on the second floor, we would have more than enough space in this building for everybody. I mean, and I, was, I, mean I, I, I think that the DEA move out, not only because of yeah. we did not have yeah. enough space, but also because of the dangerous of that building. And I believe when I spoke with the DEA about it, they said we have to move out because the building is not safe. And based on what you just uh, stated now, you claim that the only space that was somewhat renovated was where John Barkley is, and Correct. the rest of the building is unsafe. Well, let's face it, we have some common sense, and I, I did see $120,000 within your budget. I'm assuming this was for that. But although, um, you know, the Plymouth County would have to spend that money, I believe in what you said, it's like one point something million dollars to renovate this building. The question is, how long do you think it's going to last? It's going to take them to fix it. Well, first of all, I'll tell you how I came up with that figure. Okay. Um, when I spoke with John, he, he told me that it, he was occupying approximately one-third of the building. And so I asked him what it cost for him to do that renovation, and his figure was 600000 So I just merely doubled that at, at, just a, at just a guess. I will say there are no windows in the side and back, and I wouldn't allow anybody to occupy. In fact, it's against the building code. You have to have natural lighting and natural ventilation. I wouldn't allow anybody to occupy that building until windows were put in and proper egresses and things like that. So it might be more expensive than what Mr. Buckley went through. I'm not sure what they had to do there. But it's up, it's up like that. Call it 1.2. So with that $120,000 that I'm seeing, in your budget, this is just a joke, given the amount of money that you I assume. think that the, the, I believe this, and I'm- No, we're just assuming I'm that. I'm just speaking, I'm assuming- Yes. That we were under the impression that building was ready to move into. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that 120,000 would have been made those moves possible, because I would have had to move two departments out of this building and the health department out, and then I would have had to move departments into the spaces that we vacated, so I believe, and I'm, is that, I imagine that's what the 120 was for. So uh, moving out for you would be to take 
to take away everything that you have in this building. And also you stated that you do have stuff in the basement and stuff all over the city hall. So you would have to, I mean, in order for you to do your job effectively, I would assume, you would have to move. Council, council, we, we gotta get, stay on, stay on track. We're, we're talking about something that's not gonna happen. Uh, let me finish my question. So we got to what well, you said you that. Question, but we're um, talking about something that isn't gonna happen. Well, right we're now. talking about the building property moving out from city wall. And I think if we have to talk about not only <coughs> allocating money, I would assume that this is one of the subject that does deserve talking on it. Because according to uh, the gentleman that we have within us as we speak, and based on what I know, not what anybody is telling me, what I know that you are doing, I think your building, and I already stated it, I could be somewhat repetitive, is one of the most effective, important building that we have in the city. I strongly believe this is a subject that should be talked about. I strongly believe they should give you an opportunity not only to express yourself, but it's my job as an elected official and somebody <coughs> that represents the entire city to make my point across. And I think that as one of the four councillors at large, I do have a solemn obligation not just to sit behind this desk looking good, but also to let the taxpayer know what's going on here. So I would like to thank you for everything that you have been doing for the city of Brockton. And one thing that I can promise you is that if this does come to life, I'm against it. And I'm against it all the way because I'm sick and tired of people just wanting to do stuff just for the sake of what they want. This is the city of Brockton. This city should represent everyone. And your building is something that is doing an excellent job for all of us. So I commend you. And I'm glad the fact that you express that frustration, not on anybody, I'm, but to that responsibility that you have. I don't, I'm not expressing frustration. What I always do when I come before this council, I hope certain questions don't get asked. <laughs> but when they do, I will give you the answers that I believe are the truth. But we have to ask Regardless them. of the consequences, so. Well, you know, we have to <coughs> ask them because as somebody who's in charge of this department, you know what you do better than I do and have no knowledge whatsoever in regard to how you approach this building. I mean, you just said it that this place was about to falling apart. You and your staff fix it up there. This city hall looks well, this chamber looks beautiful. <coughs> I would assume that if we didn't have someone like you with your knowledge and also your staff, we probably wouldn't have this beautiful chamber. So it's important for people to understand it's not just talking about allocating money, but also understand the responsibility of your department. And I believe that's why the council president did ask every single head department to come up with a mission statement in regard to what your department does. And I think you did an excellent job in terms of explaining your point and based on your responsibility. With that, Mr. Mr. President, thank you. Uh, thank you. Councilors, we just have to be a little careful when we're asking questions because we don't want to get into a territory where we might be violating an open meeting law because we're discussing things that are not on the agenda. I think we need to kind of stick within the budget. I know questions come up on a regular basis that everybody wants to ask, but we just have to stay focused on the budget and okay. otherwise we'll be here a week and a half um, and there's a Bruins game tomorrow night that I don't want to miss. Uh, Council Sullivan. I think the next Bruins game is Thursday oh, night. And is it the, we, the way it's going, we might be here till Thursday night. <laughs> Could I? Mr. Superintendent, good evening. Hello, Council. Um, first of all, I want to thank you. If, if you think a year ago when we were over at the War Memorial doing this mm -hmm. exact budget, Jim, I had Sweat asked you if you would respectfully look at and you could add to your list because your list was very impressive. But the Council meeting room over there, uh, kudos to what you did and your staff. And, and that was in conjunction with uh, the Dean of the Council, Mr. Yanari, as well. But um, thank you for doing that. So please add that to the list. And last night, um, I asked the mayor, and it's something I've asked for years, uh, previous mayors as well, but the Little Red Schoolhouse. Yeah. And Mayor Coppin has said to me last night and said to us mm -hmm. that he had spoken to you about it and that the city needs to hire a historic architect. And I'm just trying to figure out, first of all, if that's accurate and what a cost figure would be, because the way it is right now, it's, it looks deplorable. I agree. And I will say, I. I love that building too. I think, you know, it's very important. I, I, I just want to stress, and I know that you all know this, my number one concern obviously is always occupied buildings first. Mm -hmm. yep. That building is in need of the entire outside of the building restoration. It needs the roof repaired, it needs soffits, it needs fascia boards, it needs new clapboards, new windows with the proper historic mullions, and, and it, right. 
What you do is you hire an historic architect and he researches the building and what it looked like when it was originally built. And he will detail in his plans the reveal on the clapboards, the type of mullions, the type of, of soffits and things like that because you gotta be careful not to do things that would actually remove it from the historic register because now it's not historical anymore. So it's very important to, I went through it on the clock tower here. When I redid the clock tower a few years ago, um, this is a historic building. They would not let me put the windows in I wanted to put in. They made me put wooden windows in. So now when I have to paint those windows, I have to get a, a crane to get a painter up there. That's how particular they are. Even the ones that you can't see way up in the clock tower. But Jim, do we have, because I dealt with this in another town, you know, you have the Mass Historic Commission in, in, mm -hmm. in the archives building you have to go into and deal with them. But, and it's very rigid, I get it. But do we have a historic architect that we can at least inquire about? Because my only fear is this, and I think Mr. Fowell said, I mean, we're six months away, things happen, people change. And because it's at the entrance, the Forest Ave entrance, it's the first thing you see, mm -hmm. and it looks like hell. And, and again, I understand from a you know, dollar standpoint, it's occupied versus non-occupied, but I mean, it's a gem, and if we let it fall apart, it is, it is gonna fall apart. So is there some someone that yes. can recommend that we can look? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to call the guy that helped me out with the clock tower and, awesome. and get a recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can I say one thing, Councilor? Absolutely. It, Go ahead. Um, Troy is here. If, if, if you feel that you want an explanation on that 120, I think Troy might be able to give you a better explanation than I did. No, I think we're fine. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Councilor Isaac. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioner. Hello, Councilor. <laughs> Hi. Um, Over here. Question on the budget. I see that you have pool maintenance. It's mainly for the Manning pool, 30,000. How come only the Manning does it's it? It's both pools. Also, oh, it, it says both. Manning, but we use it on both pools. Okay, and then we charge, right? Kids pay to get it. There yeah. is a fee. Do, yeah. do we collect enough funds to cover some of the costs? I think the that pool? they were in the black last year by about $5,000. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, when, we, when we originally were asked to run the pools, they were paying a company $60,000 just to maintain the Cosgrove pool. Unbelievable. We only had one pool at that time. So we're doing both of them for $30,000 in-house. So that's a significant savings. Yeah. And I know um, many residents were very happy to have both pools open last yeah. year. It's a lot of work, I'll tell you. That, so. that one's 53 years old. Wow, so. yeah. yeah. Um, the other question I have is in-state travel, 32,000, is that for your staff or what? The, what the um, inspectors use their own vehicles and they get reimbursements on their vehicles. So it's more like mileage and They gas. put their mileage in oh, okay. and, and there's a calculation for wear and tear. I don't know what the calculations are, but that's what that so line is. So it's I not mean. like for edu trips, like educational? Not trips. at all. Okay, no. that's it, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Councillor Nakashtra. Michael. My one, oh, sorry. Yeah. Is that better? Yep. I'm very grateful. <laughs> okay. My one question had to do with that capital project, and I think you've answered it, $120,000, perhaps toward a new rental. Well, can, can I bring Troy up on that? Troy, you want to talk to that, the 120? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. President, evening. counselors. I think a robust discussion is always good. I'm just happy to offer some clarification uh, as to the objective of that money. Uh, my understanding certainly is that no conclusions uh, have been reached. I would equate this request uh, to the request that you considered a few weeks ago related to the police and fire stations, uh, that there is a significant space needs uh, issue here in City Hall and that uh, this is an attempt to explore the opportunity uh, to obtain additional space to do some studies here in the city uh, and take a look at what offices might be moved around and certainly to take a look at a potential collaborative effort with the county to occupy some of the space at 32 Belmont Street. Uh, but. I'm speaking from my involvement to date with the project that certainly no determinations 
uh, final determinations have been made and that the, the money that's being requested uh, is to just take some incremental steps towards solving the space needs problem in City Hall. So to, I just want to dispel uh, any notion that any final conclusions have been reached. I, in my very brief tenure here, uh, I think share the assessment of Jim Kassiri and the amazing job that he does to maintain this beautiful historic building. Uh, I, I would suggest, and this is just uh, responding on the fly, but uh, to Councillor Sullivan's inquiry, this money could also be used to move us forward, uh, perhaps with some, uh, some work on, on the schoolhouse. And, uh, and, and I'm happy to be a resource working with Jim uh, and that as well, I've overseen the, the restoration of a couple historic town halls in the Commonwealth. And uh, so I think we have an opportunity maybe to pursue both uh, projects at, at the same time with this requested funding. Thank you. Thank you. And just as a PS, Mr. Cassari, one of my neighbors is a historic architect. Oh, okay, good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, any uh, additional questions relative to the budget? <laughs> going once, twice, three times. Mr. Kassiri, please stand there so we can go to item number eight. War Memorial, James Kassiri, Superintendent. Um, I think we know the mission of the War Memorial and I just simply maintain that building. Take any questions. Any questions for Mr. Kassiri with relative to the War Memorial budget? Going what? Yeah. 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 Gone. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Councilor, there. <laughs> Thank you. Could, just a really quick question. I know we've talked for years <coughs> about uh, installing air conditioning. Are we any closer to that? Um, Thank you. I know that it's very expensive, mm. but I know every year it comes up during right. the budget. Um, Every space in that building is air conditioned except for the auditorium. Big room. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't done any thing with that. I mean, we're, the budget's so tight, and there's so many other things we're looking at. I didn't think it was the prudent idea to ask for a couple hundred thousand dollars to AC a building we occasionally use. So. Okay, so we're not renting it out more often. I, I know a few. Um, a few organizations have rented it for functions. We're not, how's that going? Um, I think eventually, well, we're gonna talk about it, the Shaw's Center. Okay. That yeah, would be the more likely it. place. Correct, okay. Mm -hmm. That would be the more likely venue if we can get that to where it's supposed to be than using a historic building that has cherry wood paneling that's 100 years old and hand carved and having people run around in that building, I'd much rather put them over at the Shaw Center. But okay. that's, no, that's just my thought, I don't run that, so. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Kasseri, thank you for keeping that just beautiful yeah. building. Council Borger. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I just, a uh, quick on this, you know, you highlight <laughs> the whole thing with the mahogany and whatever. There's sometimes you go into other communities and they have a historical building that's part of the community. Is there, do you ever work on, or know of any, you know, work on collaboratives of that nature where they would maintain protecting, you know, it's, how would I say, it is historic value and preserve the building at the same time while you're using it? Well, that's what we do, Councillor. I know, but, <laughs> but you just said that, I mean, you know, for example, we asked about the air conditioning, and I agree with you if you put, you know, you don't have the, the funding right now, but at the same time, if, uh, you know, if you don't want to use it for that, but are there any, how would I say it, the, you know, I mean, I'm going to cite the one in Plymouth, okay, where they have, con they have auditorium <laughs> seating, and it's always like that, and they have concerts, I mean, you know, uh, presentation speakers or what have you and they maintain its, its its preservation but I thought well I mean we're supposed to have a historical commission in this city and I don't know where that's going now but it would seem that they're you know that's what I was looking at it primarily for yeah. as opposed to parties that's like you the said, use I project. envision there not so much as having parties and weddings but having you know an orchestra playing in there but with the auditorium with AC having using the stage and the theater, yes. that, that's more what I envision 
rather than having the type of events that you would have at the Shaw's Center. We'd be able to have different events there. And it, really all it takes is, is money, some procurement, and we can put some AC in there. You know? right, thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Hey, thank, you. thank you, sir. Um, Madam Clerk. Stadium, James Siri, Superintendent. The fun one. Questions? Microphone is yours, sir. Um, I will say that since we've taken over the stadium, we've done quite a bit of work there. Um, we've done roof repairs. I think we may have the roof repaired. We've put in a hot water system for the Shaw's Center. We fixed the backup generator that hadn't run for five years, which <coughs> is necessary if you're going to use that place by code. You have to have a backup generator. Uh, we still have a rodent infestation we're having a problem with. Uh, we jetted all the downspouts in the building, so now that the, the, the uh, gutter system's working better. Uh, we fixed, we repaired the, some air handlers, but they do all need to be replaced. There's 11 of them. We fixed every, all the equipment in the kitchen. And those, I should give you the figures on those. Mm -hmm. Well, the overall figure is 99,500 we've spent. We replaced ceiling tiles and we changed all the locks. We replaced a three bay sink in the kitchen and, and all of those are itemized, but the bottom line is we've spent $99,500 there. And we also have um, gotten Amoresco back under contract. And Amoresco is the company that we use to do all that work. I mentioned over at the police station, they've done a lot of work in a lot of our buildings and it's based on energy savings so we don't have to come up with, with the money and the energy savings pays for it. So they're on board and they have, are in the process right now of assessing that building and I'm going to have them look a little bit more at a few of our other buildings while we have them under contract and hopefully a lot of the work that we have to get done there can be done by them. And that's where we're at right now. But um, we were handed a, uh, a real mess over there. Uh, my east side wants to come out and use the vernacular that's not allowed to be used here. <laughs> but the place is an absolute dung heap. And I'm really pissed off about it that, that this got thrust on us the way it did. They've occupied that building and done absolutely nothing. It's It's... It angers me what I have to deal with over there. It's a lot that got thrown at us. My people have responded well. I got a call from the guy at the Rock Center a couple days ago. He said, hey, the Eddie Williams isn't gonna let us open if you don't come fix the fire alarms and put the ceiling tiles back in. I said, well, it looks like you're not open unless you get your butt off the chair you're sitting in and put your own ceiling tiles back in because you guys are the guys that made the mess there, so fix it up. And consequently, they took care of some things there. But it, it's. They don't even, the bathrooms aren't even clean there. It's, it's crazy. And I'm, I'm beside myself with it, really angry about it. It was a beautiful facility when Jack Units built it. We all enjoyed it, we all loved it. And for what's gone on there in the past few years under the management of uh, an individual is um, beyond belief. If, if you had handed me that building 10 years ago, we'd all be proud of it right now. It's unfortunate, but that's where we're at. And it's a lot of work, and I'm set up for failure there because I don't know if I can succeed, but I'm going to try like heck to make that what it should be. And that's that. Uh, Councillor Cruz. And then Bob. Uh, first off, I agree with everything you've said on this. This question is probably for Troy. I, I'm looking at the Shaw's mm -hmm. budget. I see some big numbers, personal property, non-overtime, all that. Why is there a line for manning pool maintenance? It's $30,000 for manning pool maintenance under the Shaw Center. That's a mistake. Well, but it's in that budget. I think it's... Unless I'm reading something wrong, yeah. but I'm reading... That's a continuation of... Uh... No, no Councilor, it, th they are in proximity to one another, but they are within the public property's budget. Yeah. So... W what we thought it was important to create separate lines for the stadium uh, personnel costs 
and purchase the services so that we could track exactly uh, what those maintenance costs were ongoing. But the, uh, the pool maintenance. You have a section for Shaw's Center, but you don't have it. That's not a whole section. That, that's correct, Councillor. So it, the, right now, we have created separate lines for the Shaw Center, mm -hmm. but there is not, as, as with the War Memorial, there's not a separate budget, but there is uh, a separate section within the budget, which is separate from the pool maintenance, if you look. So there's a line for the pool maintenance, then uh, the next line says public property stadium overtime. The next line is public property stadium purchase of services. Well, and I, I know we're, when we do our, our calculations and when we make our cuts, we work off of the tabs that we have, the sections that we have. If we have a section for stadium, I assume we have a budget for stadium. So that, that was actually requested uh, th that that be separated so that you had the opportunity to consider this separately, really, I think more of out of transparency than anything else, so that we had the ability to discuss separately this proposed appropriation and how much money we were dedicating. Well, when we appropriate this money, we appropriate by the line item. So I want to make sure that when we appropriate, say, public property, personal, this is not for the stadium. So the only two line items for the stadium are uh, uh, stadium overtime at twenty thousand dollars, and stadium purchase of services at one hundred twenty-five thousand. That's correct. That's also. the only two line items that go. So th we're only going to spend one hundred forty-five thousand dollars up there. Well, no, for sure. Uh, this is what this you, budget tells me. You, well, but you just heard, I think, from from Jim that there's a significant amount of work. I understand we, that. What I'm talking about is we vote on a budget. Right. And that line, uh, there are two line items that I see. This is my concern. We, I, in, when you talk about transparency, we have obviously out of that public property, personal services, not overtime, a lot of that is going to be labor of, of Jim's men up there. But if we're putting two line items in, we're approving those two line items for up there. And that's all. Correct, because uh, when we determine what the capital needs are, for the stadium, uh, as with any capital project, we would come back before you uh, with a request for some sort of supplemental appropriation or a loan order uh, once we understand the scope and the totality of the proposed expense there. So from a budgetary standpoint, uh, this is the request. We frankly, uh, and I've toured the facility with Jim, this is an estimate. Uh, it, because it's a similar amount that was in the mayor's budget for Brockton 21st Century Corporation, until we really understand uh, the, the, the depth and the scope of the repairs that are required, we won't fully know. Uh, what we do know is that, that at least this amount will need to be dedicated to keep the building maintained, to pay the utilities, to clean it, and those sorts of things. But we do anticipate most assuredly uh, a fairly significant capital request coming your way sometime when we have the ability to make that assessment and Amoresco has done their work. So I guess that my question, and this is for you, Jim, under the stadium purchase of services, 125000 what is that in particular? That's so I can continue to repair things as they come up. You know, there's still a lot more work to be done there. There's holes in the sheetrock, the seal and tile. I mean, a lot of the stuff Amoresco won't be covering. They can only cover things that are energy related, <coughs> energy savings. Energy savings, correct. I understand. So there are that. issues, other issues there. I mean, just simply cleaning out the junkyard under the stadium is going to mm -hmm. cost some money. I don't know if oh, yeah, you're aware that. of that mess there. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's behind the scoreboard. I'd like to get the place cleaned up. Yeah, start moving awful forward. So that gives me money to spend on other things, as well as keeping the AC running until we can get it replaced and keeping the hot water running until we can get it replaced, keeping the sprinkler system in service until things can be totally updated. So that's to just keep the building in repair. Right. And hopefully that will be enough. <coughs> if it's not, we'll be back. Okay, I just, uh, I mean, it's I, a I guess, know it's a new, counselor. it's a new year, it's a new, mm -hmm. I'm just, how that, how this budget has been written is a little confusing to me, I just, okay, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor, Councilor Fowler.
I guess what we're saying is what started off as a dream turned into a financial nightmare for the, for the residents and for the city. I, mm -hmm. I'm more concerned with the, the rodent infestation that you just mentioned. Is that confined to the Shaw Center? Is that confined to the stadium? The or stadium. The it's stadium. the stadium? Yeah. Well, then how the hell do we open? What it's not in the stadium. It's in the office portion of the stadium, believe it or not, in where these people are working. Mm -hmm. But, but oh. I mean, amongst travel. the I mean, raccoons. They, you know, they Maybe we should change the mascot to the, rac yeah. the rock and <laughs> raccoons. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the, <laughs> other thing, the other thing that bothers me is that, that yeah, you know, that's... That, that's just totally unacceptable. Do we? Is there an insurance policy that the rocks carry that indemnifies mm -hmm. the city from any liability? I don't, I don't want to get into a long discussion with the city solicitor tonight, but do you know, are we, are we protected? That thing's going to open up. Are we yeah. protected? I don't know that. Okay. I don't. I, I'll, I'll stop here, and maybe I don't want to know anymore. Thank mm -hmm. you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Luzak. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner, I share your sentiments of, I was appalled when we toured it. I was with you that day and um, mm. I can't, I didn't even want the rocks to come back there and be our tenants. Like I, I understand they're in a lease, but it was, I can't imagine how they're working in such conditions and that they <laughs> let it get to that point. Um, so what I would ask is how do, keep, how do we keep this from reoccurring? Well, I mean, it's probably not totally all cleaned up. I know your men were cleaning when the weekend we were there and they put a lot of time in there, which I disagree with. I didn't think the city needed to go in there and do actual cleaning, like regular maintenance, mopping, tidying up, which it was a pig's tie. Um, how do we keep it? keep them from do, re, redoing, well, I mean, well, putting it in another state. I mean, they've first, let me, so negligent. First, let me separate the two. The Shaw Center is, we're close to having that functioning. Uh, it does need new rooftop units, but we can limp along, I believe, we can limp along with what we have. It's the, uh, with what we're talking about with the raccoon infestation is in the office That's section correct. of the stadium. Mm -hmm. um, we've made headway on that and, and as soon as that problem is resolved, we will make sure that the animals can't get back in the facility. Then we can go about the task of having a hazmat team come in and clean everything up and then we can get above the ceiling tiles and see what's going on up there with the heating systems and, and then we can work on it. But we, we have to solve this problem and we're working on it. So I was under the understanding that you started when we toured it, way, when was it back? January. February, Jan January. Mm -hmm. so, it's, so this is an ongoing process. It's, yep. it's taken us this long. They're smart. They are smart. I, I do hear they're smart creatures. Um, the, uh, so the Shaw Center we toured as well. Now I have to tell you, I was in there a few weeks after, about a month after there was an event there and there is a, there's a leakage in the restrooms. Yeah, and, that's and the wall. The, I believe we got that under control. Oh, Just okay. Just this week. Oh, good. Okay, that's good I, to hear. And we, we got a pretty good test on it, too. So, Very good. So as far as um, I mentioned to the, the mayor the other night when he was here that have we done an audit of what actual valuables are at the Shaw Center? I know some things have gone. Well, we bought a lot of new furniture there, mm -hmm. so we know what the, that number is. We've spent, I want to say, 50 grand on furniture and tables. We got rid of all the old stuff. As far as things that can walk away there right now, there's not too much left that can walk away. I mean, there was some valuable kitchen equipment. I'm there. Yeah. Not much. There's some stuff. There some is. stuff. Yeah. Um, Council Fowler brought something up. I mean, as the owners of the stadium, we carry insurance for it, correct? I don't know those answers. Oh, okay. I just maintain it. I really don't know that. Yes, you do. Okay, Council, I'll. Yeah. Councilor, we have uh, resolved. Coming, coming up. up. Okay. I, I, I just want to make sure that we're covered as far as yes. our personal insurance. And all that stuff Certainly should be do. brought okay. forward Very back, good. you know, at that date well, so we can get that squared. Thank you for all the hard work you guys put into it. I know it was um, a nightmare. it was heartbreaking. It was a mess, but thank you, Commissioner. Thank, thank you, you Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Mr. Clarkson, tomorrow, please check if you could on the insurance policy because the insurance policy was all a part of what used to be the money that the mayor had 
under <laughs> Century 21. And any time we wanted to cut Century 21, we never could because Mr. Condor would always indicate because of the insurance that there's on the building, on the buildings, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be able to take the money, but in this case, we have. There is an insurance policy. If I knew we were gonna have this discussion, I would have brought the original contract with me, which I have at home in my desk drawer. Mm -hmm. I'm a pack rat, but sometimes I guess it's why you keep things, because I do have the original copy that talks about that particular issue, issue and item pertaining to the insurance. So you do need to check on that. And I understand we have a resolve coming, but mm -hmm, for our mm -hmm. own benefit, I think we want to check on that to make sure um, because of the rocks being open under the circumstances that the building is under. Uh, and, and believe me, I, I don't want to see anybody get hurt anywhere. Any of, work, any of our workers, nor, nor anybody that's there for, you know, for a game in itself. But you will find that that's where that is or uh, Mr. Condon's a telephone call away in regards to it. Um, same as, as my concern is if, if all the money has now been transferred, I think the building, is, if I'm not mistaken, I think the contract is, is almost in its pay up, or has been paid, you know what I mean? And my concern is next gonna be the meals tax, where's that money going? Because that was all a part of building. That was the forte that unfortunately, it was a good administration, but that's what, you know, the units administration wanted to do. And when I was on the school committee, they took the land away from us, which was the Baron Sully Field. And a lot can happen. I can give you a good history rundown if you'd like it at some point in time. But um, those two things I have concern with as well. So I'm just, I'm, I'm not making a directive to you. I'm just asking you if you could just check that out for us and get us some, some information so it's a clear understanding, just knowing that the, the place has the insurance and it should have it, okay? I Understood. We're still peeling back the onion in many ways on this property, I know. and, and mm -hmm. uh, I know. It, it, I, I, I'm quite certain that the the property is insured, but but I don't have a covered selections page before me, so we'll I, make sure that we share with you. I mean, all I, the I, I relevant would, information. Not to not to interrupt you, but I I would think that it would still be, and I don't think that the mayor would have just because all we did was take the money out of B21, which is fine because the taxpayer is probably at, at peace now that you know B21 doesn't have a 21 century court, whatever you want to call it. I don't know, Council File. What did you name it when you started 20 years ago? I forget. Century 21. What would we call it? Uh, Brockton 2000 or something. Something like that, right. We're getting to be 2000, that's how old we're getting to be. But in any case, um, people are gonna be happy to know that that money is not there for that and that we're doing something different because the taxpayer always never wanted to see that money spent that way. And again, I would like to know um, before the end of the budget process where and what the meals tax would, would be because that's that money used to go there to that, so that's, you know, a, a few buckaroos that could go somewhere else or go into helping that building uh, with renovations, okay? Okay. I appreciate it, thank you. Thank you, Councillor uh, All right, um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say quick, you know, I appreciate the fact that, you know, when the city took over the buildings, you know, you made uh, you made you made it available to the councilors to take a look around, uh, and I said it then, and I'll continue to say it. The work that the Rock Stadium and the Shaw's Center has presented to your department would, you know, that that would be a significant undertaking if it was the only thing that you had to do. But it is in addition to the work that you're already pushed to do. Um, so it is, you know, I just wanted to say for, for everyone here and the folks at home, uh, it is a significant undertaking, you know, and it really is, it really is something that we've made, you know, the progress we have. And I just want to say thank you for, you know, the work that has to go into it. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, Councilor. Anything else for the commission? <laughs> once, twice, three times. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Um, Madam Clerk, item 10. Law, Phil Nasrallah, Jr., City Solicitor. Mr. Nasrallah, welcome. Good evening. Well, if I may, uh, to commence with my uh, mission statement of the Law Department. Uh, the mission of the Law Department is to provide effective, efficient, and professional legal services to all departments in the city of Brockton, the mayor and personnel regarding their official capacity within city government. 
The city solicitor and assistant city solicitors are responsible for providing representation and advice on behalf of the city and to city officials in, following, in the following areas, including, but not limited to, all zoning issues uh, representing the zoning board and rendering legal advice to the zoning board, planning board, conservation commission, environmental issues, employment law, civil rights, civil service, all contract actions and negotiations uh, outside the city as well as with unions, appellate tax board cases uh, in representing the assessor's office and treasurer, <clears throat> all real estate issues including legal drafting legal determinations uh, in assisting the uh, building inspector's office, workman's compensation, education law, uh, we have the license commission within the law department now, so we oversee licensing and uh, advise on the rules, regulations, and state statutes. We uh, render the, uh, we assist in the prosecution of all building and health code violations in the housing court. Uh, we defend all actions against the city, against city personnel, city council, the police, the fire department, and uh, as well as uh, personnel injury, uh, personnel issues in personal injury and property damage claims. We oversee all labor negotiations, grievances and arbitration proceedings and civil service hearings. We're responsible for drafting ordinances, uh, reviewing them and other legal documents, numerous verbal and written opinions rendered to department heads, counselors and to the mayor. Uh, the law department's paralegal and principal clerk are in charge of administrative and clerical duties associated with the traffic commission, including budget and purchasing, collection of surcharge fees, constituent inquiries regarding parking and traffic issues, and parking and ticket appeals and hearings. And the paralegal is the appointed parking clerk. That is a brief summation of the machinations of the law department. Councilors, uh, questions relative to the solicitor's budget. Councilor Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Attorney Nezarello, good evening. Good evening. Um, I had asked Mr. Um, Mr. Brophy relative to um, selling tax title properties, um, the fact that uh, Attorney Albanese is no longer that. I just want to make sure, Phil, is, is, is most of it kept, at least the legal aspect, not, not the, the auction auctioneer, but the legal aspects are kept in-house that is correct. The legal aspects are in-house. We uh, oversee the results of the auction in the auction, draft the legal documents conveying the deeds um, and ensure that the, the title is clear properly. Uh, just to expand, uh, we did bring in a professional auctioneer, Sullivan and Sullivan. It was conducted by Marian Sullivan. All accounts I've heard from everyone, they're exceptionally pleased with her. She had um, advertised in numerous papers, both um, uh, ethnic and English uh, written, and uh, had posted advertisements throughout all of our, our retail establishments, in, 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 in particular uh, our ethnic, uh, non-English speaking as a primary language. Uh, she accommodated us with that request, so I, I thought she did an excellent job, and she got great reviews, and she worked at a uh, significantly less uh, percentage on the auction. Excellent, excellent. And, and I say this every year, and not just because I'm an attorney, but uh, you know, one of the most important of any municipality departments is the law department. And if we look at the city of Brockton solicitor's office compared to New Bedford, Fall River, Worcester, Fairhaven, Haverhill, the, the staffing is not on par with those other municipalities. Um, and again, you have some really good attorneys. Most of us have worked with a lot of them, very good attorneys. Um, you know, just recently uh, a big lawsuit against the city was thrown out and, and that was a collective effort of your office and our attorney and some other attorneys. So thank you on that. But my question is this, Phil, relative to two line items, the outside legal and the consulting, and I understand there's a lot of pending cases and stuff we can't even talk about. Um, but in terms of the consulting, I've asked this of other department heads, you know, it's 96, a little over 96 grand. You know, if you look at it, it's pretty, pretty, pretty stagnant, that amount. Could you just explain what the consulting aspect is in conjunction with the solicitor's office? Uh, Mary, I'm just looking for that line. Oh, I'm sorry. It's on page 156, uh, Law Purchase of Service Consultant. 
fifty thousand of that is payment to Cook and Company for taking over the IOD. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, Mary. Well, fifty thousand dollars of that it goes to Cook and Company. Cook and they Company took out the injured on duty. They okay. Took over so on that's there. right off the top. The other fees are associated with the um, uh, process servers. Yep. Um, that kind of nature. Okay. No, the Cook and I didn't Arbitration. know that. That's yeah. okay. Okay. And then the only other big one that people ask about, and you know, I. You have to have quality people in-house, but not every attorney in-house knows every aspect of the law, so you have to go outside. I get it. Do, does, does a lot of this right now, Attorney Nezzarella, this, this amount that you have budgeted and the mayor match what you wanted, is, is, is that used for pending matters or projected future matters or combination of both? Or uh, That would be a combination of both. Okay. Okay. Because a lot of these matters are ongoing, and as, as you know, they could be three, four, five years before they come to termination. That's right. So we're trying to couple both of those together. You know, and, a, and, a, and, a and we normally rely on certain outside counsel for certain matters, as you stated, especially if we feel it's going to be protracted litigation where, as you, as you acknowledge, we have a lesser than full staff, and we need those reasons we need those li legal lifelines so to speak yeah I mean in a perfect world I'd like to see a portion of that money and it's not gonna happen now but I'd like I'd like to get hire more in in-house attorneys as well so so again we're on par with Quincy and, and fair you know uh, Fall River and, and the like um, thank you very much for what you, you do and please uh, thank your staff as well I will it's a thank collective you. effort and thank I, you Mr. I Chairman. will say that it is an excellent staff they work beyond the regulated hours. They produce excellent work, and uh, they all work together. We all work together, and I'm uh, very pleased and privileged to be working with all of the attorneys and, and staff in the office. And I do want to do a shout out as ch chairman of the ordinance, and, and you know the president sits on that. Um, last year, Attorney Bridges, you and Attorney Bridges, and our attorney Shannon Resnick, I mean hours and hours and hours yeah. of, of work to help us on that. So thank you again. Yeah, I Please thought that was a good collaborative thing. effort with uh, Attorney Resnick and, and uh, uh, Attorney Bridges, who put in a lot of time on that's that. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. While she was pregnant. With triplets. Yeah, that's right. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's the caveat. <laughs> Councilor Fowler. Okay, I, uh, to coin uh, Councilor Ian Erie's uh, phrase, I, I was asleep at the switch. Uh, <laughs> five three zero two zero zero legal four eighty three three twenty four. That's the outside counsel. Mary says yes, so yes. it's got to be yes. Okay, and and the one ninety eight uh, uh, strike that the ninety six eight ten is the Cook and Company, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, the majority of it is yes. Okay, now tell me about this five three one seven zero nine equity suit one nine eight four six nine. Is that the the educational, the equity and education uh, case, correct? Okay, now I, and I'll rely on the, my colleagues. I thought we authorized a hundred thousand for that, mm -hmm. and I did not know that that they were going to keep coming back for the proverbial bite of the apple. Now approaching two hundred thousand this year, uh, and if they are, why wouldn't that come out of the school budget rather than the city side? Well, first of all, the, the hundred thousand dollars was never anticipated to be the full boat as to what we expend I, I agree. to I agree. to expand okay. uh, to expend, uh, and um, this was important for us to get off the ground. And we have a collaborative effort with several other communities in legal counsel, and we were also very fortunate to um, engage a Boston legal counsel, experienced in this area, that has been willing and agreed to take on uh, most of this, actually some firms, all of it, on a pro bono basis. Uh, there are experts that we have that assist us in the field and are assisting the litigators and the attorneys on information gathering, which is a significant part of the litigation. Uh, the historical um, information gathered in the, uh, the inequities of the education in part of uh, the expenditures is to fuel that which we believe assist us in preparing a, a in mounting a very strong offensive and I think we will uh, the idea is to get the ear of the state legislature mm -hmm. that will hopefully uh, 
come to the altar with us on this, on this um, uh, opinion and not require us to go all the way to litigation, but we have to be prepared to litigate if, in fact, the uh, state legislator, does, the legislative body does not uh, see it the same way that we see it. And, and I agree with all of that. I thought uh, that, the, uh, that nothing had been filed yet, that it was actually being it, held in abeyance. It has pending. not been, nothing has been filed. We have, uh, we are in a pre-litigation stage. Um, part of the process was to make a very strong an effective statement to the state legislature, legislative body. Uh, I, together with the mayor and several other communities, have met with Maura Healy. We've laid out on, because she would be the body that would be representing the state, and she seemed to be very attentive, very understanding, and very cooperative with the concerns that we have. Uh, Brockton is basically the lead in this. As you know, we have a long history uh, with with that issue, um, I mean, a lot of the preliminary groundwork was done originally. I don't know if that can be some of it resurrected. I, I well, guess some of I, it, but the, the facts have changed. But uh, yes, yeah, some I, I of it. Whatever I guess we can what utilize, I'm saying is not to interrupt you, but we've gone from 100,000. Now we're up to 198.469, and I, I'm just saying that, you know maybe there needs to be a timeout and we assess where we are with all of these other communities. Are they kicking in the same amount of money we are? But the other basic question is, why come out of the general fund? Why not come out uh, on the municipal side? Why not come out of the school side? Yeah, I, um, um, I think 98,000 is left over. That would, yes. Okay, well, I, I, I don't expect you to know what the other communities but, have kicked well, in. Well, I can tell you are, that the other, from my conversations with them, the other communities, uh, several major communities have agreed to kick in money, uh, significant monies, and we have a lot of the gateway communities and communities comparable to the issues Brockton has and, our, uh, and, and see the importance of this. We are in the stage as far as the um, negotiation or um, preparation of the lawyers now are preparing a complaint which they will be able to present uh, to uh, the Attorney General and again with the hopes that we can resolve this without going all the way to the uh, end goal line. Mm -hmm. So because this would start, this 198, 469, and I, and I do think it's money well spent if we can get Brockton's fair share. Since it doesn't start until 7-1-2019, there could be a possibility that you won't have to expend all of that. Maybe the legislature will realize that it's better to solve this rather than litigate it, because if you litigate it, they could end up with quite an open-ended a, a, a lot of uh, negative things can happen if they litigate it and they are not successful. And we, that's why fueling the fact situation, we have experts we've engaged that uh, bring us all of the facts, the historical data, and have a very strong understanding as to what's going on in Brockton as, as well as with other comparable communities. They are working with some of the uh, Boston law firms in, in providing this, and we're currently in the process of preparing the complaint which should be, um, well, I have a conference call Friday. Uh, we've been conference calling every Friday, and I think within a, a couple of weeks we'll have a model complaint to go forward with. This is an exceptionally important um, uh, action, civil action, by the City of Brockton. The City of Brockton has been leading this. The, the mayor, um, he, he kicked this off some time ago. It's been an overriding concern on his end, and I think it uh, is a requirement for the benefit of the the students, the children of Brockton, so we are on equal pile with the students from all other communities, be it Brookline, Newton, or some of those that are a little more affluent than Brockton. So uh, it's a goal we are going to reach. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Um, I'm gonna stop having Councillor Durancourt come up here because every time he comes up, he turns my microphone off. Uh, Councillor Isaac. <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Solicitor. Um, there was a judge that did that, and it wasn't too well, didn't go over too good. Several times, I'm here, kind of doing lip reading, you know. <laughs> good evening. Go good evening, Counsel. Uh, question: You have a line item here, 40 U dis dispute, hundred thousand. I was under the. I remember. I believe in last year's budget, we were going to get a, an agent or maybe somebody in your office that was just going to do kind of work. Well, we have, uh, we have some outside agents that, um, one, we have to send them to training, and secondly, what's been the delay in implementing this, which is long overdue and well needed, is there's a requirement that, um, uh, hmm. what's the name of the company now, excuse me, what's the name of the company that collects the bills? Too? Oh, interesting. Kelly and Ryan have to be trained in, I, I Attorney Eileen, Eileen Bartlett indicated, I believe it's mid-June, there'll be a company coming in to train the department heads and Kelly and Ryan on how to collect these funds. But uh, there is uh, several matters that are awaiting the 40U hearing officer okay. so we can uh, collect it um, okay, promptly and efficiently. Now, our department could and will step in where needed, but to avoid conflicts, I thought it best if we could stay remote from it and have an independent hearing officer, uh, especially if our department is prosecuting a, a particular matter and seeking the collection. I just think for optics, it's better if we stay arm's length. So is that what that 100,000 is for? That is, is for correct. an independent yes. person? Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Council. Councilor Durant-Court. Uh, Mr. President, I think I'm all set. I think uh, Attorney Nez um, Nezuela just uh, responded on uh, the question that I was going to ask in regard to that line item. Thank you. Shocking. Thank you, sir. Uh, any anything else Welcome. for the uh, relative to the budget? Going once, twice, three times. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Number 11, please. DPW Engineering, Chike Odonkwe, Engineer. Uh -huh. Okay. Mr. O'Donoghue, how are you? Come on up to the microphone and. Uh, how are good you? evening, how are Chairman you? and City Councillors. Um, the uh, engineering division is tasked with performing um, engineering design and management of roadways, sewer, water, and drainage, supervising their design and construction. Also ensuring that the records of these are maintained properly and um, shared with public when they come in to review or check information. They manage the Legal, uh, the deed and legal description of properties for water taken, taken for water, sewer, and drainage. Is meant for streets and day out. Takings and uh, abandonments. They also, there's with the uh, public works commissioner for the purpose of, of public works in attending pre-construction and conferences with the mass DOT. They, they superintend the um, Chapter 90 projects and projects that are related to that for the city. They record and retrieve liens for deeds and instruments and plans from, from the um, Plymouth County and registry of deeds and land court requests. They maintain records and sewer assessment for city for sidewalks, curb betterment, and other lanes in, suppo supported in support of the Office of the Treasurer and Collector. They draft changes to the zoning districts and provide legal description required for City Council to keep zoning maps up to date. They obtain survey and plans, provide legal description to all streets layouts, accepted and abandonments provide data, desi data design review, order of takings, names and all our records, recording services and attend to related 
to relate to city council and meeting of public hearings. They provide certified copies of plans to the Office of District Attorney in support of drug cases, prosecution, and answer all subpoenas. Provide expert testimony when required. They provide resident engineering services for all city roadways, construction and reconstruction. Also, they provide and superintend any, in, any design of, this, uh, of city infrastructures. They provide resident engineering services for the Brockton Rebellion Authority, provide general construction inspection for all private projects affecting city streets, sidewalks, utilities, and other public properties. They provide construction license application, review qualification of an insurance and bonding for all contractors working in the city. They review and evaluate plans and permits, technical data and reports for compliance with state, federal, and state laws for the city of Brockton in support of the planning board, zoning board, building department, and city agencies. They, under, they understand and apply the zoning ordinances of the city of Brockton on subdivision control law, river, river ways act and wetlands protection act, and clean water act. <coughs> in support of the planning board in approving projects. They advise the public in preparation of a variety of plans and specification prior to presentation to the city, to the planning board and, and the conservation commission. Contribute to the development of plans, ordinances, subdivision control laws and regulations and site review policies. Research, analyze, evaluate each, each using recognized engineering standard and pra of practice. Participate in special multidisciplinary tax meetings with city and community groups, agencies such as Oconic Plan Council. Provide data necessary to, for legal determination for zoning enforcement officers and city solicitor and the zoning, zoning board. Provide a member to this uh, board of surveyors as required by the most general law. Also, the, <coughs> the trained staff to, be, to be able to design and supervise and inspect projects for the city. Thank you, sir, for that explanation, uh, description. Uh, Councils, anyone having any questions for the city engineer? Once? Actually, I, 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 I'd like to uh, ask Commissioner Rowley to come up because he's in charge of that. Uh. <clears throat> if there are no objections, please step forward and objections. speak to the microphone. Good evening, Good Commissioner. Evening. Commissioner Rowley, uh, you have always been a consummate gentleman. You have responded to text messages and phone calls. I, in the three and a half years that I've been here, I actually have Nothing negative that I could offer uh, about your professionalism or how you carry out your duties. I am going to tell you, though, that I'm not happy about this DPW engineering budget, which is a public document. It, it's, it's not just for us, it's for the public. And to put in here that you need civil, additional civil engineers and an administrative assistant because of a stormwater ordinance which hasn't even been introduced yet. It hasn't even been read. It, ha it isn't even before the council. That's, that's disingenuous at best, and I don't know who thought about how to present this, but it's, it's purposely misleading, in my opinion. And I, and I have to tell you, I, it's about the only negative thing I can say since I've been here. Uh, I just don't think that's the way to operate. The mayor can put in an appropriation at any time. Mm -hmm. If we pass a stormwater ordinance and somehow we mandate that we have to have two or three more civil engineers, there is nothing that would preclude him from putting in an appropriation to cover those salaries. But to put it in this budget, which of course would go on the levy, which of course 
drives the tax rate and, and the burden to the taxpayers, I, I got to tell you, I don't agree with it. Now, um, I don't know what will happen to these, these figures. Um, you know, that'll be up for further debate, but it, it just shouldn't have been done that way, Larry. I mean, it, it really shouldn't. Uh, and then I even got an email, and I think we all got an email saying that this was mandated by some storm water or storm water ordinance. So I sent out something to some colleagues who have been here a while saying, do you remember passing this? I don't even remember it. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to beat a dead horse over it, but you, you wouldn't go before the legislature and say, well, you need to give me this money for these positions because you're going to pass something in the future that mandates I have them. And um, I'll let it go with that, Mr. Chairman, but I, I do have to tell you, I hope I hope we don't do this in the future. You know, well, put, put I, in I, here I'd like we, to say, Councillor, that the intent was not to mislead anybody on this council. Um, but by putting this in, and maybe we were wrong. Um, maybe we should have waited for the ordinance to be passed and then come in front of you. Um, maybe that was the right way to do it. I'm not disagreeing with you, but it was not put in there to mislead anybody here. It was not done on a sneaky note. Um, you can always take it out when you cut. When you cut, I mean, we have two different budgets here. We have one with that in it, yep. and we just have our regular budget. Yep. So that's why we put it in. So if you feel as though you want to cut it out of this budget, go ahead until we get it passed through the ordinance. I've been waiting a whole, almost a whole year to get this ordinance heard. We had to develop it because by July 1st, we're mandated by the state to get this done which we're, we're kind of ahead of ourselves anyway. We are doing a lot of this work, but, but um, year two, we have to have this in place. We have to have ordinances in place. We do have time to do this, so I, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you, but it was no intent. And I don't work like that, so I, I kind of don't it, like that from coming from you either, it, um, it, and I, that I, I you know, I, purposely did this. I did not do anything. Well, I, we put I it in there you and you can cut it. I didn't say you purposely did it, but I do think it's misleading when you submit a document to the council indicating that we need to fund certain positions because of a stormwater ordinance that no one has even read or looked that's, at. That, and, and that's so, correct. Uh, let me say this. If, if DEP is mandating this, I, I'd like you to provide a copy of the documents that, that indicate that to all of us. I'd well, like it's, to see it's that. Known, it's been known because the city of Worcester tried fighting this for two or three, four years, and we all did it in a collaborative manner to try to beat this stormwater ordinance because it, it is going to be an extra fee to all of us. Well, it, and, it, and, and they lost in court. So we're going to have to do it, but we'll, we'll just, I, I, just I apologize. ignore that part of that piece of the budget then. We'll just go with the regular engineering budget, and I'm sorry that happened. And, and I, I'm just not, and I'm not being facetious, I didn't see anything in the news media. I wasn't aware there was a stormwater issue in the, in no, the it's, Commonwealth. It's been, so, it's, it's been huge with uh, all but, the cities you know, and towns. We'll, I'm sure whatever you put before the council, it'll go to ordinance. Councilor Sullivan and is And then we'll come back in for a sub, yeah. And, and then we'll, we'll do it in the right order. I so, agree. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Boy, we can, uh, we can always come to an agreement, which is good. Uh, and I haven't used the gavel once. Uh, this whole uh, <laughs> so budget far. hearing. So Feel free. Yeah. Feel free. Should we do it? Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, if there are no, no additional <laughs> questions, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Engineer. Uh, Madam Clerk, um, we are at number 12. Okay. DPW Commissioner Lawrence Rowley, Commissioner. Mr. Rowley, now it's your turn. You might as well pull up a chair. <laughs> you know, we're going to be here for a while. Can I just say, I, I misspoke. It's not DEP, it's EPA mandated. That's okay. the feds. Well, we, yeah, whatever, whatever. One, one of them, one of them. One of the agencies. Go right ahead, sir. Um, again, good evening, councilors. I, I have six or seven budgets to go through. Um, I'd like to read the mission statement as I go to the budget. I don't want to do them all at once. Please do. Okay. So this is my budget. Um, so the Department of Public Works Administration section to administer and oversee the personnel daily operations of all the Department of Public Works divisions to ensure the safe, prompt, professional, and courteous completion of all city services provided by the Department of Public Works. 
The commissioner sets all procedures and policies for the efficient operation for all DPW divisions and sections. So with that, I'll take some any questions, questions on this budget. Questions directly to the commissioner with regards to his commissioner budget. Hmm. And then we can get into the individual departments, but right now it's just the commissioner's budget. Any questions? Madam Clerk, the next one. DPW Refuse, Lawrence Rowley, Commissioner. Council and Council, if you don't mind, I'm just going to read a little because some of these mission statements could go on yeah, forever. Just, uh, so, um, uh, I mean, Refuse, everybody, it's well known, but. Well, Commissioner, one of the things that we wanted to do is that uh, we often hear from the constituents that they have no idea what, she, what the departments do. Correct. So we wanted just to do something a little different in terms of introducing the departments to the community. Right. People that are watching us, we know what you do. Right. But the folks that might be watching us on TV have no idea what a particular department does. That's why we wanted it. No, I, I understand. So the, the basic purpose of the Operations Division Refuse Section mission is to pick up Rubbish, tires, debris, et cetera, from all roadways leading to and from within the city of Brockton, city-owned property, and to keep the city clean. In addition, we educate residents and school children in regard to recycle and enforce the city's pay-as-you-throw trash program and ordinances. With that, I'll take questions on this. Any questions for the uh, commissioner with regards to the refuse? Hearing none. I, I do. I just. Council Sullivan. Good evening, Larry. Larry, you remember a while back you told us that certain stores in the city of Brockton um, didn't have yeah. the, the Brockton bags because they, in essence, were stiffing the supplier. Has that, has, yeah. I think Walmart was the one, if I. I, I believe Republic has them in court right now. Oh, Good really? Republic has Walmart. Oh, okay. Walmart. Oh. Walmart. So it's all, that's all squared away. No. They, they are not carrying our bags. They are not. They are not. Okay. No. Charges. But we did pick up Lowe's. They are talking to um, Home Depot, CVS, all these little markets. There's plenty of bags. There's always bags at the recycle center, yep. and there's always bags on the third floor. Great. Thank you. Oh, okay. We've never ran out of bags. Right, it was just Walmart had stiffed Republic on the yes, bill. Yes, and, okay. and, and they won't really relinquish the truth on what happened, yeah. so <laughs> I guess I just did. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Uh, Madam Clerk, item number 14. DPW Highway, Lawrence Rowley, Commissioner. Commissioner. So the Department <coughs> Works Operation of the Highway Section is responsible for repaving and maintenance all public roadways within the city of Brockton. Um, the proper response to snow removal, sanding, salting operations, um, maintenance of all, of all roadways by filling potholes, trenches, uh, response to emergency wind or rain incidents, the responsibility of the operations division, street sweeping of the neighborhoods we do twice yearly, cleaning of catch basins, rivers, maintenance of the city drains fall under this division. With that, I'll take any questions. Any questions, Councillor Azak, followed by Councillor Cruz. Good evening, Commissioner, and thank you for all that you do. It wouldn't be budget season if I don't ask. Is there any way we could try this year to get the street sweeper out? Maybe one. I know they it goes out. They go out in the spring and the at the beginning of the spring. But is there any way we can get them out more often? Just maybe on our main main well, streets. It, I know it, they it do would, a lot of the side we streets. We do. We do, um, we hire sweep, uh, three sweepers in the spring and three in the fall. In the meantime, we have one that goes out every day that's in-house. He does Main Street, Warren Ave, he does in between Spring Street, that gets done, I think, every morning. Can we send um, him at the bottom of Prospect? <laughs> Just kidding. All you have to do is request it. I will, and I, um, and I, I appreciate it, I know we have. I had from one of you councils to get one road done, so we will, you know, Okay. If you see some streets that need to be done, we can do them. Perfect, and I appreciate that. And I know we uh, have constituents that do call us and that'll say, I believe at one of your at large meetings, the lady was complaining about, I think, was it Fuller Street, counselors? That yep. It was Fuller Street, she was asking. So we'll call the department and give yep, uh, ask fine. for that. So we appreciate it, thank you. You're welcome. Council Cruz. Thank you, uh, just I see in this budget here, you have 105,000 in separation costs. Are you expecting quite a few people to be retiring? And, uh I, I do have um, three older gentlemen that could retire. Um, they have over 40 years in, within the city. Wow. So um, 
Are they going to retire, Councilor? I don't know, but I have to put it in there anyway. Okay. Uh, and actually, if you'd allow me a little leeway, Mr. Chairman, because I actually had this question two budgets ago that I didn't get a chance. In your own hey, budget, sir. your office, I see $46,000 in separation costs. That, that's going to be for me, Councilor. So we'll cut that. This might be my last budget. We'll, we'll cut that and you'll <laughs> have to stay. You give me a raise, I'll stay, Councilor. <laughs> We're just going to cut your retirement, that's all. <laughs> um, I, I was afraid of that. Okay, thank you for the... Uh, He's not going anywhere. Thank you, and thank you for the work you do, Larry. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you, Councillor. Anyone else? Madam Clerk, there... Oh, Councillor Castro. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Raleigh. Speak oh, I'm sorry. That's okay, sorry. I'm still in highway. Speak briefly to paving the roads. I get so many calls. I know. Council and, and, and I do too and I just wish we had the money to it would make life easier a lot easy a lot easier for me mm -hmm. um, We have the two million dollars that we get every year from the state mm -hmm. and What I try to do at the end of the year with all my budgets is I try to encumber Whatever money I can in the correct line item so I can use it for paving so I think last year I had 700,000 that I was able to encumber but I mean just to do um, Copeland Street was like $500,000 to do that. Um, Cole Road is like 400000 So it's not cheap anymore to, to do a street, and we just don't have enough funds. Mm -hmm. I wish we did. And then also some of the streets in, in Council of Burgards, I can't do them because the infrastructure is so bad. And I feel bad for these people, but... Water, sewer, drain. I mean, I say it every year. When you build a house, you need a, found, a good foundation. So the top of the street could look beautiful, but underneath is, is, is bad. And I don't want to go in there and have to put a hole in, which I've already done on one of these streets um, that we just repaved. I think it was Morrison. Because of all the, all the work we did and the vibratory roller goes over there and it shakes everything that the, these pipes are not in great shape. And I'll talk about that when we get into the water and sewer budgets. So, yes, get me some money. It would make life a lot easier. I'd love to pay off the streets. Of course. Thank you, Mr. Rowley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Borger. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Raleigh, and uh, we appreciate what you do. And yes, um, we're trying to get you more money. Believe me, I'm up at the state house all the time with my hand out, and uh, we're trying in you know, different ways. But I am curious: is there ever an occasion where you're mandated to repair, uh, you know, a road or or see that it's you know paved or what have you? Not that I'm aware of, Councillor. Okay. I was just I was just curious. Thank you. I should be. <laughs> that one of the couple streets you have in your ward. Yes, yes, I'm well aware. We could we could be here all oh, night naming them. Still yes. Jacked. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Anyone else, uh, Madam Clerk? The next item, please. DPW maintenance. Lawrence Rowley, Commissioner. So, Councillor, this this is a small two-man operation. Um, they maintain most of the um, all the vehicles in the operations division. Uh, they maintain the snow and ice removal equipment, perform maintenance on city vehicles on a case-by-case -case basis, and review specifications for new equipment that we may order fully equipped for public works. There's not much to this uh, budget. I'll take any questions. Any questions for the Council Cruz? Just one, Chairman. $380,000 for gasoline. Is that just for your department, or does that cover other departments? That covers other departments. Council. So police and fire. Police, fire, school. So everybody basically goes down to Oak yes. Way and gets the yes. gasoline, and that's that's everybody. Yeah, the it, is it the police. Uh, I mean, the fire do their smaller equipment. I think the larger equipment, their trucks, they do it their own place. Okay. We do all the, the cars and small trucks that they have. And that's all gasoline, or is that diesel under there too? I mean, you have diesel down there also. Gas, it's, it's gas and diesel. And diesel. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Um, Madam Clerk, the next item, please. DPW Renewable Energy, Lawrence Rowley, Commissioner. So, Council, this is another budget that. Thank God, there's no personnel in it, but it, it's just we oversee the Brightfield project. 
Brightfield project is on Grove Street. It's solar panels, generates power for us. Um, what I have to oversee is probably the maintenance of the Brightfields itself. Any questions on that item? Hearing none, next item, please. DPW Sewer, Lawrence Rowley, Commissioner. Sewer. Commissioner. So the, so the, the, the mission of the sewer div division, this is an enterprise fund, um, is to maintain all sewer lines throughout the city of Brockton. We perform 24 hour emergency services to those connected to our system that should have the sewage backing up into their property. The sewer division is responsible for farming preventative maintenance work and all sewer connection, replacing all sewer lines, the installation of new and repairing of existing, of existing sewer services. Um, it's just a, a marking out sewer service for utility companies and contractors. Um, the sewer division maintains and repairs over 320 miles of sewer. And we sewer approximately 23,000 plus or minus custom, uh, customers. Any questions on this? Councilor Sullivan followed by Cruz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Larry, I, I don't have any question per se about the dollar amounts, but I've been asked by a couple different constituents. There's some rumor floating around relative to maybe the city taking back the plant and Viola being out of that business. Do you have anything? That's, that's hearsay right now, Councilor. Okay. Um, I can say we are looking at it to see if we can do it cheaper. Okay. Is and that contract up relatively soon or? It's uh, 2020. This year. 20, 2020. 2020. So. Um, so it's uh, being looked into. It's being it, examined. Excuse me? It's being examined potentially. We, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. All yes. right. Yes. We're, we're looking at us taking it over and we're looking at extending or putting it back out to bid. Okay. We're going to see what's going to be the best for the city of Brockton. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Chairman. Council, Council Cruz. Thank you. Uh, my questions are not really about, about any of the budget line items. It's a little bit more about the enterprise fund and, and really it's water and sewer. So we clearly need to raise the rates so we can start. The sewer system as well as the water system are in badly, badly in need of major repairs, correct? Correct. I mean, as you were mentioning, some of the roads, you can't, you can't even send trucks down. You, you can't do a, a, a repave because of the infrastructure underneath. Correct. So it would seem to me, and you tell me if I'm wrong or if I'm being a little too simple in this, if we were to raise the rates enough to where we really have an enterprise fund and can start to replace, um, talk about sewer lines right now, when we replace those sewer lines and water lines, we then have to rebuild the road as part of that money, correct? Correct. So the way to get money that we're clearly not getting from the state, I mean, we, the $2 million is about the same amount we got 20 years ago mm -hmm. from yes. the state and is probably worth about half as, half as much because of the cost now of, so, so 2 million could probably do 20 miles for you 20 years ago, does five miles of road for you now. Right. But if we get, raise those rates and start to fix the infrastructure, which is instead of emergency repairs, we make a plan and we start to replace those. Part of that money that we raise in those rates, which are not just <coughs> voters in Brockton, but, but also come out of rate payers outside of the city, we can then, we have to replace those streets, correct? Correct. So it seems to me, I don't know why we don't get the numbers up to where they need to be to replace those, to, to make those capital improvements where, I mean, how many times during the winter in particular, especially when it's cold, are your guys out at three in the morning for or two days to repair emergency brakes where if we start replacing those, now we're not patching the street, mm -hmm. but part of that replacement, it comes out of that enterprise fund. Is, is a new roadway also. Is a new road. So we kill two birds with one stone and every councilor here admits, every ward council will tell you in particular, the single biggest call we get is not about public safety, and it's not about schools. The single bi biggest amount of phone calls every one of us gets is about repairing the roads. Yeah. So if we just repair the pipes, which need to be badly repaired, we're gonna get new roads out of it at the same time. Correct. So it's a double bang for that dollar. 
We, we've already done that in, in Ward 6. We did Tina and Norwich and we did Torrey Street. Right, we, but we, if, we what I'm saying is- We water sewer drain and we put a new road in. So- That's the way it should be done. All, all the time, and it's a double bang because we have to replace the pipes. Yes. And then once we dig that road up, we have to replace the road. Yes. So for the same nickel, for, for the water rate payers and the sewer rate payers, we can do both things that we need to do. Yes. Then we can concentrate on, with the Chapter 90 money, on the places that already have infrastructure that's been replaced or is in better Correct. shape. Correct, correct. Uh, just, I hope everybody remembers that later in the spring when uh, I'll do the unpopular thing and propose water and sewer rate increases to get us to where, uh, and again, Mr. Clarkson may not even be able to give us an answer on this yet, but we, the city has paid parts of the water enterprise fund for years now, instead of all the ratepayers. And it's a, it's a shame and it's, a, it's an insult to the ratepayers. They don't get it, they, they, nobody wants to see taxes go up or rates go up. But when the rates go up for the water and sewer, you get something for it. And it's something yes. that we absolutely have to replace anyways. You, we still have clay pipes out there, don't we? Excuse me? You, we still have clay sewer pipes out there, don't, don't well, you? There's a lot of clay out, yes. Yeah. Yes. It, and that's a, that's a major issue. Mm -hmm. So I'm, gl I'm glad you brought that up, Council, because I have been talking to the new CFO and the budget director, and we are coming up with a plan which we will be re pre presenting to you in the fall. You want to talk about it? Sure. This is a very timely issue, as Larry mentioned. Uh, we've been meeting for a while now. Uh, I actually cut my teeth in uh, municipal finance as the finance manager for an enterprise fund. Uh, so I'm intimately familiar with, with how they work and would absolutely 100% concur with the sentiment of uh, Councilor Cruz that uh, particularly in the water, uh, the water's inability to cover its expenses. And it's important to note that when an enterprise fund can't cover its it, expenses, it is literally subsidized by the general fund, by the taxpayers of the community. So it's really an important fiscal issue because not only when the, when the general fund has to cover the enterprise, uh, not only is that an expense, but that typically means that the enterprise also does not pay uh, its administrative reimbursement to the general fund. So it's really a, a double, double whammy in terms of uh, lost revenue. So Larry and uh, Karen and, and Andrew and I are working on a plan uh, that's fair and equitable across uh, all sections of the community and all ratepayers to try to figure out a way uh, to, to be able to bring more revenue into both the water and the sewer enterprises so that we can invest long term uh, in, in repairing and replacing that infrastructure. I mean, otherwise we should get rid of the uh, enterprise funds and just make it a, a straight subsidy from the city, which is silly because we do, particularly the water goes out into the other, uh, out into three or four other communities, correct? Yes. Yes. So, thank you. Thank you for your patience on that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Council Cruz, Council uh, Lally, follow up, follow. Right. <coughs> All right. <coughs> Sorry. Now I'll be quick. Um, you know, I just want to echo, you know, what, what's been said before. Uh, you know, I, I absolutely agree that, you know, water alone really needs the boost. Um, I think we spoke closer to the end of winter. Do you, can you recall off the top of your head how many pipes or bur how many bursts you had to uh, react to? Yeah, I was gonna bring that up at the water budget, but oh. I believe, um, and it all happened when I came back from vacation, I believe it was like the first week of, of January to the beginning of March, we had over 130 water leaks. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. And I go sometimes to the as association meetings and they're all bragging that they had like, they had a busy winter, they had 12. <laughs> and I look at them and say, oh my God, okay. You have that in the morning. Hmm? You have that in the morning, I know. <laughs> well, you were out there with us, you saw what we were up against, so, um, yeah, so. Yeah, the, and uh, it just doesn't stop. I mean, I'm on the water now, I know we're sewer, is that okay? Um, <laughs> but we're going every day with water problems. I mean, I was just up here on, on uh, West of 47 West Elm Street. They want to connect into the water main up there. It's a 20 inch water main put back in, in, in the 73 and 74. And the pipe is so deteriorated that I can't even make a cut into it. Okay. But the problem is I can't even get it to shut off. We were up there all day today. We can't get it to shut off. 
So these are the problems we encounter every day. And not just that, but it's just you must get poor pressure calls. You get discolored water calls, mm -hmm. um, low pressure calls. I mean, especially up in the Brookfield section. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's nothing we can do unless we increase the size of the pipes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got, I've got people who can't, you know, run the dishwasher. I know, and, and they pay good the money for our water and sewer, and, and mm -hmm. I feel bad about it, but yeah. I don't have the money to do it. And so I'm only I'm only mentioning it to you know to echo from what Councillor Cruz was saying. It's it's money that we we really do need. This isn't money we, that we, we need. We we we're gonna just have to do it. I this, mean, this it's is, just that's just we yeah. got to do it. And I mean, I'm not gonna be around much longer, but I'd like to see it going in the right direction before I, I leave. I don't like to hear that. <laughs> this is this isn't. But this isn't. You're right. This isn't money that we need in the future. This isn't money that we need today. This is money we needed yesterday. Mm -hmm. So, so we'll that. we'll put a good package together before we even and, and we'll bring it to you and we'll explain everything and we'll see where we go from there. We'll just work together on it. That's all. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Councilor Council Powell. Just as a point of information to Councilor Cruz and and to Commissioner Rowley, the the there was a budget analyst, I believe, in the CFO's office. The gentleman made a presentation at a public meeting on water rates. That's what I was he outlined. Say what each increment would yield in terms of revenue. I believe Councilor Beauregard and Councilor Nicastro attended that meeting, mm -hmm. if I remember the minutes properly, really well and done. I believe that was in 2017. That was never forwarded on to us. That so, you know, with all due respect, if it's that critical and the work is done and the, and the analysis is created mm -hmm. and it's not sent on to us, then, then frankly, I, I, and I'm not being funny, apparently isn't that critical because the work is done, the document exists. I will try to find it in the minutes mm -hmm. on, the, uh, on the city's website. But, uh, and, uh, and forgive me for not remembering Ms. Preble's uh, uh, colleague's name, but he, he did an outstanding Andy. job. And, and, and yeah. He really did. And You're Andrew, right, Councilor, because we, we flipped the blocks, but yep. we'll, we also want to do something else too with that. Um, and that did get lost. Where it got lost, I don't know if it got lost in the Water Commission or not. But, but I, I mean, at least I can't it, say. it would have been a start two years ago. I guess yes. that's my point. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Council Borger. Yes. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you. Um, Are we going to stick Mr. with Rally. sewer, right? I'm sorry. Well, we're going to wa sewer and water here, it seems. Well, he's not in water yet, so well, you want to hold off until we get to the water. Well, we've been talking about water, and I was going to oh, elaborate. We bouncing back and forth, but we're still yes. in the sewer. Why don't we just why don't we finish the sewer, sewer and go to the water? And okay, we'll go to the fine. Water. Finish the sewer, and we'll go to the water. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Don't drown. <laughs> DPW Water, Lawrence Rowley, Commissioner. You'll be the first one. To, you'll be the so first councilors, one. The, the water division maintains and repairs over 320 miles of water mains, approximately 23,000, 23 plus active water service accounts. We have over 4,000 hydrants that we have to maintain. We have over 6,000 gate valves. A gate valve is what shuts the water on and off in the street. Um, and we, and we service towns of Avon, Hanson, Halifax, Pembroke, and Whitman. Whitman takes all their water from Brockton. Mm -hmm. The other towns, it's just a few customers here and there. Um, the water division also maintains the, the two 24-inch uh, water mains and one 30-inch water main, including maintenance on actual mains and the brush cutting of all the easements. So um, with that being said, I'd like to add a little bit because you, you did allow us to do some um, work on our transmission mains, which we just got done with. So we don't go back to 2015, what happened in East Bridgewater that we had to shut the city down. Oh, yeah. We have all new gate valves from mm -hmm. our water plant up to Peaceful Metals mm -hmm. because our water main goes right through the, the pastures. So we can shut it down now and leave one main live and if we had to, the work on the other main. So that work has been completed. That was a, a 1.5 million dollars worth of work. Um, we started it last year and we just finished up in April. So that work is done. So that makes me feel a little bit better, but I'd like to go from Peaceful Meadows to the Brockton line now um, because our 30 inch water main runs right under the MBA tracks near Perkins Ave. That keeps me up at night, not much longer, but um, if that ever goes, <laughs> we're in a lot of trouble, which it did go when I first became superintendent, I believe. Um, if you all remember on Perkins Ave when the van went in the hole. So yes. with that, I'll take any questions. Uh, before Council Beauregard, um, Commissioner, 
What would it cost to replace all the critical pipes in the city? Do you have any idea? I, I don't. The, the mayor the asked critical, me. The critical ones. About 76 million, that's what we got. About 76 million dollars. That's all the major ones, that's not the little branches. I mean, we still, councilors, we still have side streets with two inch mains on them, which is unheard of nowadays. We just did um, Annis Court, which had four or five multi-families on it, no fire protection at the end, they had poor pressure. We did it in-house ourselves. We ran a new eight inch line down there with a hydrant, everybody's happy. Um, there's still these little streets in the city that we, we have to get, we should get fire protection on, mm -hmm. and we should get people better water pressure. <coughs> Council Borger. Thank you, and thank you, um, Mr. TBW Director and Superintendent. Uh, we, three things here. Yes, when Andrew had done that presentation, that was the public hearing that we have annually, and yes. it was done at the unknown. And I remember we were in the auditorium, and it was done last year in April, and you know, minimal attendance. It but was last year it was done. Yes, yes, oh, and it okay. was presented by Andrew. Yes, and it went really well, and he gave specifics. Now at that same time, we were also making some changes with the governing portion of the Water Commission that's now, because of an ordinance, a um, what I'm going to say advisory, and I'm aware that. Generally, they don't meet. But I remember that there were a few discussions and an agreement that of how we were charging certain bills that we, um, how would I say, it? fees, I'm gonna take that back, fees for certain situations and that we were not comparable to some of the other communities and that could also be another revenue, you know, not massive naturally, but um, another, you know, sense to review. And in some, circumst cir some circumstances, when people needed to have like an inspection or something like that with your department, that um, they were fortunate enough uh, that it wasn't uh, you know, a situation where they charged, and apparently maybe that needed to be revisited. Again, that's not a reflection on yourself that you came into that, but it just, I guess we need, it to, ev need to evolve with a few circumstances, and th in that case being the, the fees you know, increasing, just like a lot of other things do for those that you know, need the, how would I say it, the services. Uh, and you know, generally what, they're one time, and the other being for um, some other circumstance with the inspection, and then again with the revisiting in the water. Now I'm also bringing that up, because you're talking about the size of these mains. And it said here, and this, you know, J.K. Uh, was up here just briefly, that um, when he talked about his mission statement, working with BRA, and more than one instance it says working with BRA, as in Broughton Redevelopment Authority. Now it seems that every time we turn around, there's this presentation of putting in more apartments. And I mentioned at one of these, how is this going to work? I mean, if it's six floors, for example, three floors or whatever, and there's 40 apartments, or, isn't there going to be a time when there's the water just won't make it because of our antiquated well, infrastructure? It, 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 it all depends on what part of the city we're talking about. If you're talking prim about primarily downtown Maine, Montello, here. Warren, we have plenty of water there. We have big water mains there. Okay, so that well, we could, yes, we have plenty of water. So primarily when you're saying with these smaller water mains, they're yeah, in the like neighborhoods. I, like I just said, Council, if they, they wanted to build it and we say we have a two-inch water main there, I'd say no, absolutely not, you can't do that. I mean, even if a contractor comes in now mm. and wants to build a, a house slot or two there, I'll say no. Put a new water main in for us and then you can do it. Oh no, I, I see, you know, but several You precinct. can't put any more people on a small main. Okay, thank you. No, I see. Roger means yes, we would have no problem supplying them with water. Okay, I know, because I mean, I see this at, you know, Tech Review where, you know, it, where yourself or Chike speaks out and says, no, you need to do such and such and such and such to uh, yeah. be within regulation, et cetera, and be able to provide you. But mm -hmm. uh, I just, that, that was a concern of mine because um, I was like, wait a minute, you know, where are these people going to get the water and, you know, the other concerns because of the different situations that do arise. But I do want to say, though, every year that you always put out the information to the public, whether it's on the city's website or in the newspapers, that when you're doing the, f you know, the, um, what do I want to say, the hydrant flushing and everything else. So that's, you know, certainly that people are aware that that generally happens, what, every spring. Yeah, and, and, and I, I believe I, I, I've 
received more complaints this year than ever because I, I really think we do it in an in, in antiquated way. Now we have to redo it because we put it on the city's web. Not everybody watches the city webs. We put it in the enterprise. I don't know who buys the enterprise anymore. <laughs> um, so I think this year before we have a February billing, the February billing, I'm going to put a stuffer in, the, in, in with the water, sewer, and refuse. Okay. I'm, I'm going to do that. Um, I was thinking of purchasing one of those signs, but I think the fire department has one. So if I'm doing up in the Brookfield section, I can move that around saying we're going to do hydrant flushing, you know, from. The digital sign. Sure, that's Yeah, terrific. the digital yes. sign. Um, well, what else was I going to, I was thinking of something. Oh, and I, and I talked to um, Mike Thomas with the school, how oh, they do great. their callings. Mm -hmm. And he said we could use that also. A question was asked to me, can we use a reverse 911? And, and I tried when I was superintendent of the utilities. They said no, because it's not an emergency. Huh. But I can use it with Mike Thomas, and that'll reach most of the parents. So yeah, I think there are different ways that we have to approach this to get the word out. Oh, no. um, and we will. Well, somebody will. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Councilor. Councilor Yanira. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let's go back. When I became counselor in 2004, the program that we had in place, I don't know if it was it. Was it counsel, I just saw that too, not to interrupt you, but you had a lot more hair then too. I, I did. I was looking yes, at the it, picture. One, two, three, four, <laughs> five. Yeah, yeah, I did. You I should school, talk, right? <laughs> from the school committee. And, and the school look, committee before that. If you really, <laughs> if you really <laughs> study it, I, I get the name Dean because I'm the only man standing in that I, picture. I, I, I noticed that. Few have passed, but anyhow, um, when I became counselor in 2004, the program that we had in place, and I don't know if it was with city funds or state funds, but talking just the way you said, because I had several streets in, in Ward 3 where I had water pressure problems when I became counselor. It was one of the biggest things that I got hit with when I was campaigning. But the one nice thing, I think I got eight to 10 streets done through that program because we went down, we took the two, two inch main out, we put the six main in, inch main in. You had to go the winter with a rough street, but came spring, yeah. you got a brand new street. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know, was it, was it city funds? Or did we get that was city funds, I believe. We had a two inch main uh, program that we used to fund every year, 500,000. Okay. Then we had a large main program right. with 1.5 million. Um, but the way the budget is now, Right. That hasn't okay. been funded, for, I think, for the last eight years. So the, so the state I, really I put it in, but it gets taken out yeah. because we don't, we can't cover the cost. Can't cover the cost of it. Over so that's how that program. Yeah, yeah. It, and, it, I, and I believe with all that, too, is we were able to hire, not hire, but we, we were able to hire five more people to, to, to just do, do main that. work. Yeah, yeah, I remember and that. that through nutrition and everything, that's gone away too. It, it, it was a good program. It worked well and the people were happy with it, but then when it was taken right. away, it was taken away. It was gone. Right. And that's why we ended up in the position right. that we're in. Okay. This right. budget cannot support that. You can't support it all now? No. no. Okay. But Thank like you. I said, we are picking away a little bit. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I think yesterday I had 14 guys and I had two, two crews out and we had both had emergencies. Uh, they had both had emergencies. Um, so like I said, when we did Anna's court, that should have been a week's work. It took us almost a month to get it done because I had to keep pulling them off to do something else. Yeah, oh. yeah. With, with Copeland, just, just not to get off the track for a minute, but Copeland Street, the other reason why we didn't do the whole street is because the gas company's coming in at some point, am I correct? Is that? Oh, to repave. You did what, um, we did what, you did Ward 4, we just didn't do Ward 3, other than what you did. For yeah, going, the, um, going north from Brookside to. We gotta go to Brookside. To, to Market. Copeland. To Market, I mean, yes. Right, yeah, right. Uh, the gas company's coming in there. Okay. Next week, uh, next year. Next, so it'll be next year. Before and that's the same thing with um, Council Beauregard wanting Elliott Street done. I mentioned Elliott Street and the gas going, oh no, we got we got all iron in there. We got to get this done. Well, um, so if they don't do it next year, I'm going to pave it anyway. Mm -hmm. And then if they have to dig it up, they're going to replace the whole road. Okay. Well, they got some older gentlemen working for the gas it's company. It's just as simple as that. I'm not going to wait for Columbia Gas to get their work done. Right, Commissioner? Excuse me? All the gentlemen work for the gas company. It takes a little longer to get things done, but I make a pave every road. <laughs> <laughs> they are doing a lot better on, on paving their, their trenches, though. They're not just doing their trench. Um, they really don't like Larry Raleigh's name down the gas company, but too bad. They're, my, they're our roads. Mm -hmm. They're not coming in here, generating money for themselves, and doing a half ass job on, on paving our roads. Mm -hmm. uh, when I took over as commissioner, I said, no more of that. So. Okay. As you can see, we do almost from the yellow line over 
they, they'll do half a street. Very good. Thank tough you. Tough company. Sir. Thank you. Get more. Yeah. Keep keep banging them. Mm. <laughs> uh, uh, also, Council. I'm also. Thank uh, you, Council Dorancourt. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Riley, with regard to that um, hypothetically number you came up with, that $76 uh, million dollars that will, it will cost to actually... That was just a guesstimate. Yeah, that's what, I, that, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Though. Let's say that um, this money was um, available to you. How long will it take for that project to be done in regard to fixing all those pipes? Oh, geez, that would be... We, you're looking at two or three years of work. Okay. Um, yeah because we don't want the whole city torn up at once, so we would probably <coughs> bundle a bunch of streets together and bid those out and get that project done. And while that project's being done, we'll have the other job um, engi uh, surveyed, engineered, so we, we'd, we'd stay one year ahead of them mm -hmm. um, because once we start a project, it's almost a year anyway by the time we get it survey, engineered, designed, and then get it through the procurement and get all uh, and get it bid out. It's it's almost a year. It, and, and and you are talking about only those that are pretty bad, right? The pipes. Me? You are talking about only the pipes that are pretty bad, not all of them. Not all of them, no. Okay. okay. No. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Rowley. Thank you, Councillor Councillor Isaac. Thank you, um, Commissioner Rowley. Just a couple of questions on the budget. One of them is. Um, under, let's see, under water goods and supplies, you have PUR clothing for pro approximately $5,400. What, what number was that? You're looking for the... That's, um, Council, that's a lot of the reflective clothing that we... Oh, okay. Reflective? That would be the full suits. Um, okay. The green suits, the vests. Um, under, under so it's pretty much... So much a, lot of right. gloves, a lot of gloves come out of that. Guys use a lot of gloves. Okay, then I was just comparing it because then underwater personal services, um, you have clothing allowance for seventy thousand eight hundred. That's that's um, contractual. Contractual. Okay. That's for them to buy jeans, boots, you know, work shoots. Work so that's okay. Now, that's what do they get per person? Out of the year. I think it's, they get twenty two hundred dollars a year to per, purchase uh, their own person. clothing. Okay. Unbelievable. So that. Um, that's what I figured, but I just wanted to make sure because I saw it right. twice. I wasn't sure if. Yeah, the other the other thing is just whatever we we buy them, and I like to buy them a lot of um safety. Safety, uh, safety clothing. Okay. We need that. Yes, we do, and um, that brings me to, then you have under water purchases, purchase of service, public safety. We're putting out eighty eight thousand six hundred ninety eight. Is that for deed police details? So that that that. That is for all the police police details. Okay, so that's okay. mainly the Brockton police, police that we're using. Well, no, I mean, no? We've, we've been having trouble. We've had sheriffs, we've had Holbrook police, yes. um, Rockland that, police, yeah. whoever he can get us a detail. Mm -hmm. okay. And most of the time, we need a detail. Yeah. Um, even on some of these dead end streets, I, I don't know when some of the people got their license. I shouldn't say that, but <laughs> we do need details, and especially when they're out at night in. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like an officer with them. Okay. No, that's understandable. So that could be anywhere from a regular patrolman to lieutenants, captains, whatever, whatever how it falls. Oh wow! As long as we have a um, a detail officer. And that's I knew that's what it was, but I thought it was. I didn't realize we were outsourcing to other de police departments. Are we having a hard time getting like Brockton? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and I believe this is my last question under water personal services, hazard duty, 33,826. Yeah, what is that's, that? um, both, both water and sewer get it. I mean, it's, it's just the, they're around storage Hats. all the time. That's considered hazardous. So is Actually, that Actually asphalt, putting asphalt is considered hazardous. Mm -hmm. so, so is that's that in the collective bargain agreement. Expect? Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, anyone else? Uh, anything else from the Commissioner? Commissioner, thank you very much for all the work that you do and keeping our city yeah. moving forward. And I'm going to win the lottery, so I'll get you that $76 million. That would be great. Uh, Give yeah. me 100 while you're at it. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Councillors. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Councillors, that concludes our evening. Uh, day two of our budget hearing. So we'll be back here tomorrow 
at 6.30 sharp, as uh, Council Sullivan would say, sharp. Okay, we go. Yeah. And uh, hopefully we will, uh, uh, I'm hey, uh, I'm on hand. Mr. Chairman. Have a seat, we have not, we're not done yet. I'm with Sullivan. Um, he's, he's stretching his back. Sure. Ah, but I just wanted to make sure that we are kind of clear on this, that I think we're gonna schedule a, uh, a special uh, city council meeting for the evening of the 17th, which would be before right before the FinCom meeting that we have scheduled on the 17th, just to deal with the budget issue. Uh, if Mr. there Chairman, are no, go ahead, uh, if, I might, Mr. Junior, right? if I might, I just want to remind those that are on the uh, Public Safety Subcommittee that we have a meeting here tomorrow evening at 5.30 p.m. You all have your uh, package oh, in front of you, so it's 5.30 p.m. tomorrow night before we have our hearing at 6.30. Thank you. Thank you. Hearing none, we are done with the people's business tonight. Thank you.